Ah, Ukraine. Once a country with people and feelings, now a political hot topic as people around the world, most of whom didn't care before, now debate on what to do with Ukraine. What do we do with the fates of 43 million people? Give them all the old stuff we've got locked away in the shed and hope they can figure it out for themselves? Or save the money, knowing it will never be spent on public services, like a true American? Should we send them tanks, or maybe have another meeting where we discuss the possibility of having a meeting, to set up a meeting, to prepare for a meeting, to table the notion at a future meeting in which the possibility of a meeting may be discussed? The efficiency of Germany is truly staggering. Two Germans there, drooling over the amount of paperwork they will have to do today. An inspiration to us all. Everybody knows that Putin could not invade Europe, for he would never be allowed to attend the meeting to get the license to do so. His passport would be denied at the border, and his army would have to turn around in shame or face a 30 euro fine, crippling their economy. For as we all know, in the civilized world, war cannot happen if everybody just sticks in at school and does the right paperwork. Bureaucracy and wish she thinking, the savior of us all against the tyranny of the oppressor. But while all this hard work is going on and Ukraine fights bitterly for its very survival, its fighters slogging through the ice and mud and ruins of their former home, thousands of miles away from the front lines, three obese men in an air-conditioned bunker have an opinion. Let us now see what that opinion be. <laughs> oh, boy. oh boy. So here's my here's my recommendation. Um we do a three, two, one, and then I'll clap into the mic, and that'll be like a clapper sound that we can all hear and like sync the audio to. Okay. Um. So, okay, three, two, one. No, it's just supposed to be me. No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, NAFO's Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, look who's f hosting again. <laughs> he's, he certainly has a few thousand subscribers and thinks he's the f the, the, the magical boy who's going to take over everything. Look at me, I'm the YouTuber now. Welcome to Falcon Fighters Tales. Mm. Oh, look at this big manly man over here with his twink fighter pilot avatar. Yeah. That's it's right. Like an no. Anime boy eyes staring at the camera going, look at me. Oh, no, really yeah, that's I right. Am. Look at Listen me. Listen to me I'm talk pretty... about missiles for 20 minutes. I mean. I'm a power twink. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, he's talking about twink. his missile specifically. <laughs> 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 I hear that booze pouring. That's right. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's Bill. right. Today's um, whatever this <laughs> thing is, it's <laughs> sponsored by the, the Becca Valley um wine of lebanon <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> lebanon made a wine but yeah. they do and that's what i'm drinking <laughs> it tastes pretty good welcome awesome. welcome to the levant we're just we're just taking a break <laughs> from all of the hamas rockets <laughs> to enjoy uh to enjoy <laughs> our drink of wine right here that's right absolutely certified absolutely certified kosher wine company uh, it's not really sponsored i mean I mean, is it no. is it good though? Is it as good as you think it is? It's it's okay. It's very dry. I will admit this. Let me hang on. Let me do, we do the way. The Middle East thing. often is laser pig. <laughs> it, 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 it typically tends to be. I mean, it is the Lebanon, so you know you. you, you it's about as as bad as it's good as you expect. Let's uh, let's let, let us sample this wine for science, of course. For science, mm, of, of course. course. I mean, of course. Mm. Mm, okay, I'm getting um, mm, I'm getting um, I'm getting wine. Uh, <laughs> mm. What what kind of I can't remember the, the the type of tree on Lebanon's flag is it a cypress tree? Is I, I think is I'm it a? Not, I don't know anything about <laughs> Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> when it's has North that ever? When have they ever done anything worthy of note? Come on, get bombed by Israel. <laughs> or get getting bombed, bombed by Israel. Israel. Everybody. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting hints of I'm getting hints of. <laughs> Um, napalm and war crimes. Mm. A delicious f***ing beverage. Pairs well with chicken. <laughs> well, it can't go with pork, can it? No, it can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be like cannibalism or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, maybe that. Maybe that is why Laserfink has chosen this particular 
particular brand. You know, we're supposed to be a serious, a serious discussion about serious. current geopolitical issues. Yes, we are. We are very we are, serious. We are serious. I have not made a boys. single joke this entire video. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> now's the time. No, in all seriousness, well, we're very serious men, as we say. Uh, as we in, in all, in all of the seriousness of the serious, this is the very first episode of the uh, North Atlantic Fellows Organization Even Rounder Table. We went to IKEA. We found an even rounder table. It is so round; it defies the laws of physics. <laughs> exactly. We we it is for good measure. reality now as we speak. I'm not even measure. confident it's safe to have this thing in front of us. <laughs> It is a massive ta- it is it is a table to surpass metal gear as it were. It is a truly incredible table. King, King Arthur King Arthur is sitting in Camelot on his mech with his anime eyes looking at us going this table has bested me. I must have it for Camelot, but he can't have it. But you see, there's a reason why King Arthur is coming at us for the other reason and why everyone else is apparently, because um, are we ignorant or evil? I'd say we're definitely evil, fellas. Uh, what do you uh, mean? We're, de- we're definitely evil. As we all know, the, I the, 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 the today, NATO so. headquarters in Brussels is just a front. <laughs> it's not real. Real NATO headquarters is on Skull Island. <laughs> Skull Island. <laughs> Laser. <laughs> Back in, what, what did I call it? <laughs> Skull <laughs> Island with the central console of Mount Doom. Yeah. And, and moored at Mount Doom is none other than the SS Great Eastern 2 Electric Boogaloo, captained by in, Laser we're King. We're not at the Pentagon. Yes! <laughs> we're not at the Pentagon, we're at the heckin' Hectagon. The heckin' Hectagon. <laughs> That's why we're all in this hot tub. I mean, seriously, it is it is rather wonderful. But yes, this lighthearted conversation is born about uh, requests from the viewers because, um, well, non-credible defense basically at a poll. We couldn't get per in because the Australian government is mean. <laughs> but <laughs> the uh, non-credible defense basically said if a laser pig anamaki podcast ever happened, it would be the end of all things. And well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> it's real. <laughs> It is now the end of all things. And I brought my little blonde twink friend with me. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I'm here too. Ah, uh, yes. No, but you see, in, in keeping with Laser Pig's older content of Eat the Rich and my own old content, we have collectivized our anime twink friend. He has now our anime twink friend. And now he's all of yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that really means a lot. Like, it, I, I'm just a normal guy. I like airplanes, you know. I I, I dress up in cosplays for now and then. I just I, I live my best life, and I just appreciate you all being so welcoming of me. So here he is, Falcon's Fighter Tales. If you haven't subscribed to him, subscribe to him now. Uh, subscribe to me while you're at it. You're watching this on Lazy Pig's channel, so you should already be subscribed to him. I mean, quite frankly, subscribe, yeah, right. like, and subscribe to all of us. It is a wonderful time. All of our chats and links and all that will be in the description if Laser Pig remembers, which, you know, is a coin flip these days, depending on how desperate it, it, the... it could go either way. I mean, <laughs> I could get a message from you a week later going, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't, like, put the link in the description. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, right. Well, I, I could just, I, I have the, I have the habit of doing this to sponsors. I get emails from World of Warships all the time going, you need to start the description with thank you world of warships here's a link to the the, the thing and then i always start the description with i'm laser pig and i'm gonna <laughs> think again <laughs> oh god <laughs> well it's like the last time i i think i remember it was uh was the what was the ad it was the uh like the dreadnought slash uss texas like it, it could be an rpg i think it was like <laughs> Like I, I, many a time, many a time have I been playing Skyrim and thought an Iowa's 16 inch main gun would be really handy. Alduin, destroyer of the world. <laughs> uh, I would I like now... to see that. <laughs> Just a f-ing Skyrim dragon versus the USS Iowa. <laughs> who would win? I know who my money's on. Well, f- f- your dragon. I mean, where we 16 inch shelter. <laughs> face <laughs> F- you Elwin. Yeah, exactly it would be incredible just think about it i'm just walking up you've got dover keen walking up to the <laughs> mountain of high rothgar and you suddenly see him do a really obnoxious pose 
It's like, Standal this, USS Iowa! Bang! Out comes the Iowa, blows it away. Like, you know, Stan uses a track, that's why he can do the shouts. Like, he's got, wait a minute, hold on. Nova King's a JoJo, because he's got harm on. Oh my god, you weep. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Coming from you, Falcon, with that display picture, I thought mine was obnoxious. Well, <laughs> post it up, man. Are we supposed to be talking? Are we supposed to be talking about a war in Europe? I think we are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. We're just like giving our introductions. Right yeah, now. well, like, I'm, like I'm, in case you're wondering how this whole thing is going to go, this is it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm drunk. Anna Mark is drunk. Falcon <laughs> is about to get drunk because we're going to force feed him alcohol. Oh no! Wait, but no, I'm 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 still young. <laughs> I so, have a lot of peach snaps on hand. <laughs> That sounds really I cool, have actually. I have a bottle of uh, aviation gin with me, sponsored I by Ryan Reynolds. Ooh, Yo, yeah, he, Ryan Reynolds is our absolute king of a man for making this booze possible for us. I had that gin recently. It's it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic gin. It's it's really, really good. Uh, I'm drinking it today in uh, mourning for Wrexham, who lost to Sheffield, and I'm very sad. Uh, knocked out of the FA Cup. Don't worry, boys. Going up. Going up. Um, so, as an American, I have no idea what that means. Uh, football. Oh, okay. a, a, a doubt laser pig. <laughs> it means football. Football is happening all the time. Football is here. I mean, the Look only football, football I know is... to move. Football! Football! Coming up, watch it, watch the football, watch it, watch it, it's going to move, watch the football, it's so wrong! Oh, the football is going to happen! <laughs> the only there football I know is Josh Allen from Buffalo. Well, if it's any consolation regarding football to bring us slightly on topic, um, Keeve Dynamo is certainly playing well recently, given the circumstances. <laughs> Sounds like a porn star name, not going to lie. No, Keeve Dynamo is the uh, main I've club no of uh, Keeve, is. obviously. Um, and they they are playing really well. They've, uh, well, they are pushing, pushing the opposition on defense, as they say. Uh, not with the ball <laughs> this time. They uh, crossed the river in the middle of the night and uh, <laughs> did some shenanigans. Like, so let's just start oh. talking about the war in Ukraine because it's what we're all here for. I mean, we might as well. It's uh, been a year. Yeah, I mean, it's been a year. This is the one year anniversary uh, of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I love, I love the fact that I'm, I'm the host, and yet Anna Markey is taking the host <laughs> position right now because I'm too no, fucking drunk to actually all this, right? do no, anything. No, this is, no, you want to know what it is? It's sleep deprivation. I haven't slept since two p.m. yesterday. I mean, shit, we're almost at 24 hours. I don't care. We're still going. So I'm taking the host position, A, out of adrenaline, B, because, uh, like, you know, I'm just the obnoxious, loudmouthed Australian. We've got... Anna Markey, Anna Markey, I have to... You're a YouTuber now. You don't get to sleep. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> he says that. He says that. And he's right, because I spent the last six hours before coming on this stream editing a video about the whole balloon fracas that's happened recently and it's in ad suitability review right now because of course it is um <laughs> nothing happens literally like, an f-22 pops a balloon and i make some jokes like i i don't understand youtube is scared of the balloon and what the worst part about it is why are you demonetizing it or like getting scared about this? The Chinese can't watch it. Google is banned in China, as is YouTube. Yeah. Who am I going to offend? YouTube is scared of the color gray. If you show gray too much, they think you're showing a war crime. So, you know. There you go. You got you put in Mark Felton on blast right now. Laser pig coming out <laughs> swinging. Just like, aha. You oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Because, of course, you know, we're all f***ing jealous of a man who got a honorary degree from the university of essex for the love of <laughs> christ and suddenly he's dr mark felt let, let, let me read of, of wikipedia and and pretend i'm a historian i have two million subscribers you mark and you know wanna... where you live <laughs> and i'm rapidly approaching your location for legal reasons that's a joke uh, As a joke for legal reasons, I'm not actually rapidly approaching Mark Felton's occasion. I have no intention to harm him, but I do know where he lives. <laughs> Again, a joke, a joke. It's just a joke. It's fine. 
the biggest the biggest conspiracy about Mark Felton is, of course, not the fact that he's a Wikipedia historian, not the fact that his degree is honorary. It's the simple fact that his intro music that has become synonymous with him is actually a royalty free track from the Apple iTunes store called <laughs> Pursuit. <sighs> <laughs> it is literally pursuit from the apple itunes uh royalty free music catalog thing and he's just completely hijacked the thing you play it like some composer working for apple has just worked on this sometime and like i heard that used as the bass beat track like bass beat track that's a word i am hippity hop with the kids um as a as we all as a, are yes as a hip-hop yeah. beat I heard this used as a hip hop beat for a joke rap about Chuck Norris when I was in <laughs> year, when I was in eighth grade. Okay, so Mark Felton ain't gotten this was when YouTube was two years old and had 240p video. <laughs> I don't know if it still exists. Wow, but I'm gonna see if I can find it. Let me get you started. Tell me a simple story about a man who gets all of that kung fu ninja glory He started his career early, yeah, he started to young The man at four, went through puberty eight times just for fun um, Hasn't time passed But yes, back on to the topic which we keep derailing Yes, um, Craig. <laughs> <it's> Craig. <laughs> we have no rails, like we're, we're literally a truck at this yeah. point the Speaking of trucks, Russia doesn't <laughs> have any. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nailed it. Same thing as Ukraine. Same thing as Ukraine. It's just a case of off the rails. Well, yes, the Ukrainians still have rails. That's the another important point. Despite that Russia's best boring. effort, Russia has thrown so many cruise missiles at the rail network, and it's just fine. Like, Pavel and Yuri are out there with pickaxes, the moment of, like, this is like, we joke about the F-22 shooting down the balloon the other day. Like, the 200 million jet firing a $400,000 missile at a balloon, right? That's pretty cool. But you see the Russians launching caliber missiles that cost, like, in the, well, uh, adjusting for their currency and inflation, trillions of rubles. <laughs> you, you see them the eating these cruise missiles at their railway network, blows a huge hole in the rail net. And they're all like, Comrades, we need to fix rail. And you have three dudes just walk out there and they fix it by nightfall and the trains are rolling again. Like, if there's, if there's one medal that needs to go out for the Ukrainian war effort, the railway workers need one because they've been going ham. Meanwhile, in Britain, a leaf falls on the line and it's <laughs> delays for five months. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually kind of know why potentially Russian missiles are acting the way they are. I mean, apart from the fact that they're digging them out of stockpiles, which, you know, <laughs> when you, you, pick up, you pick up a missile that's been sitting in a stockpile for like 10, 15 years, it, it's, it's not exactly, it's, it's not going to work its best. So hence why half of the <laughs> missiles are missing their targets. But I have, I have a slight confession to make. So in my, in my um, second Ukraine video, I mentioned that Russia does not have access to GPS forces. And I... <laughs> Specifically, did not mention the fact that Russia has its own version of GPS called GLONASS. GLONASS. Yes. And the re I did that specifically as a trap because I wanted to sh I wanted to see how many people actually know what the f they're talking about. So GLONASS is not a separate system. It's a mathematical equation used in your phone. So even if you have a phone that has that can switch to the GLONASS system, it's still using GPS. Doesn't matter if it says GLONASS on it. It's it's still using GPS satellites. It's still using um, local uh, radio towers and local cell towers and like anything that can get a signal from to calculate sure. your position. If you were to just if you were to just use dedicated GLONASS systems, your phone would not get a signal because there are currently I think three GLONASS satellites in in existence. Uh, I think this their constellation has improved over the past few years. Um, Hit me with it. I'm sorry. I, I mean, like the last time I checked, I thought it was like closer to something around 16. Like glow. There's 16 of them. So, so I used to work for a company that uh, operated DJI drones. A uh, 24, actually. They're going up. In Holy the world. shit! Oh, we've shit. actually done it. <laughs> I will. I will. I will say. Um, 
So yeah, those mostly Gona satellites are not. There's not enough of them to give you global coverage if you're exclusively using GLONASS as a system versus GPS. Yeah. Um, but of course, the the, uh, the Russian government stated that the army does not use GLONASS. It uses his own system called Scorpion, which we have absolutely no information on. And turns out with the latest announcements to the modernization of the T-90 program, doesn't actually exist because the T-90 is now using GLONASS as a GPS system. Oh, boy. They have also found oh. American commercial-grade GPS systems within Russian missile systems that crashed into Ukraine, were shot down or whatever, and were intact enough to, to actually pick up parts on. They found um, commercial-grade GPS systems inside. But there is another system that they are using and I wonder if any of you can guess what it was. Uh, well, my guess from the way they've been operating, well, at least from the aircraft sense of things, the way they were operating with the uh, Su-25s was they did have civilian GPS bolted on, like the Ukrainians do as well, generally speaking. It's, it's rather useful, and it's a lot more accurate than the uh, internal Soviet systems that most of the aircraft are mm. equipped with. Uh, the only, like, the mainline SU-25s that the Russians were using, I can't remember the exact designation off the top of my head, but the latest model of SU-25 has a um, navigation system, has GLONASS GPS integration inside the aircraft itself. Uh, but only something like 40 to 50 of their fleet of, like, 300 had that upgrade. The rest of them are still the old Soviet model, like the uh, Ukrainian ones. So they've been using... When the war first started, before they were able to get a hold of GPSs that they could put in their aircraft, uh, they were using INS, Inertial Navigation System. Um, I mean, that's still pretty viable now, but... It's, it's okay, but if you're trying, without, to, trying to launch a, a, a precision weapon system <laughs> with an INS... Yeah, that's where you're running into problems. INS signatures degrade over time, too, the longer you fly, so it's... Well, all I'm going to say is regarding that, I'm not sure what system Laser Pig is referring to, but all I know is GPS is an accuracy down to inside of a foot, so between 30 to 500 centimeters is GPS's accuracy. Uh, GLONASS's most accurate reading, its optimal reading, is within three meters of your location. So you are almost correct and completely in the wrong direction. Oh, am I? Okay. Go on. Go so, on. Based on the evidence that we actually have, we believe they are using Loran C. Wait. <laughs> really? Yes. There is a giant, there's a giant like the Loran radio C system. Nav the radio navigation equipment. Oh my God. <laughs> there's a giant system set up in Crimea. Oh there's God. one in Belarus and there's one on the border of Russia. Uh, it would give you perfect triangulation if you're over Ukraine. It is, of course... Uh, it, 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 it's a giant radio, radio triangulation equipment. It is accurate to within 15 meters of something that is standing still, a missile that is breaking the speed of sound. We don't really know how accurate that would be. Oh my God. It does kind of explain the accuracy of Russian missile systems uh, right now. To, to put that in perspective, dear viewers, if I may put my uh, faux intellectual hat on, as this is my area of expertise, as it were. Go for it. I um, <laughs> this is very Thanks. similar in concept and application to a system called Oboe and another system used by, of all things, the Luftwaffe, called Knickerbein or Exkret, depending which one you want to talk about. All those systems saw their first combat application in the 1940s. So <laughs> that <laughs> radio, radio triangulation bombing was experimented with in the 1940s, where you would have two radio beams or two radar beams interlocking each other over a point. So you wanted to hit a target. Uh, for, for example, historically, that actually worked, we'll say Coventry. You have one radar beam in Cherbourg on the sh or like in Cherbourg on the Continental Peninsula pointed at Coventry. You have another one at Calais pointed at Coventry, and they are set up so that the beams cross over Coventry. And then some poor bloke in his hindquarter is sitting there with his little radio set, 
and he's sitting in the back going through the AA guns. And when his thing goes from beep, 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 beep to beep, it means he's within three miles of what he's trying to bomb. So <laughs> now, granted, oh things have granted things have gotten a bit better since then. But the idea that the Russians are using uh, radio triangulation for precision targeting. I mean, it'll work if you've got it down, like, synthesized to, like, an accurate enough point. Like, if you've got really focused beams and you've got a really good spot on a map, if you are really good, and I mean really dialed in, you may be able to hit a block of flats. I mean, it's not going to move. I mean, if you're trying to hit a tank or something, if you're trying to hit a bunker, like, good luck. Like, really. Yeah. I I mean, well, one of the most common missiles we're seeing we've seen fired at Ukraine is a KH-22. Uh, reporting name uh, in NATO kitchen. call codes is the kitchen. Yeah. AS4 kitchen. Uh, uh, to put that in perspective, when that first entered service, I believe my dad was seven years old. I think. Christ alive. How is he now? Or how old is he now? Uh, he's... 66, I think? 67? Oh, so this is like pre-my dad. Yeah, so the KH... Okay. The KH... All I'm saying is when you go on to... When you go onto Wikipedia and look at the KH-22, uh, its display picture is KH-22 at museum. Uh, um, so, you know. Now, not that I'm going to knock using old equipment because it will still do the job. It has a very, it's a very reliable missile system and it is a big warhead. It's a big, big boy. So, you know, if, if you want to hit something and make it go away, it's a perfectly viable system. But to say that the Russians are approaching anything like accuracies, no, absolutely not. Not even close. I, that's the biggest issue they're having is just accuracy. I mean, that's why the uh, new munitions for Ukraine are so important. The uh, <laughs> Ukraine has its own cruise missile threat now, which is uh, rather Good. wonderful. Rather wonderful. The small diameter Why'd bomb. Why'd she go into it? Yeah, yeah. SPD and uh, SPD, sorry. Uh, it's uh, I can't remember the exact. Is it GD GSDB? Um, or is it GBU thirty eight? I think. No, that's a that's a standard J Um Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. This is embarrassing. Edit in post. It's it's it's, it's fine. I, I don't know the name of it either, so we're all good. Uh, no, that's. I've looked up the wrong thing, and it sent me to the Sentinel. That's an intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, if Ukraine got one of those, that that would be impressive. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. All right. I also, I also love. I just, I just want to, I just want to turn to like a, th a common thing that Vaknik like State, where they, they talk about how like the NATO was potentially proposing to put um, nuclear missiles within Ukraine's borders. And it's like, well, if that was the reason that Russia attacked them, why didn't they attack them in 1994 when they still had nuclear missiles before they gave them up? Oh, I don't it's know. Just casually reminding everyone that Ukraine was a nuclear nation up until 1994. They had inter intercontinental nuclear ballistic missiles. They had nuclear bombers until 1994 when they gave them up. And uh, for uh, for giving them up, they were offered protection from the UK, France, the US, and Russia. Exactly. Russia signed a treaty in 1994 with Ukraine saying, we will guarantee your protection and we won't invade you if you give <laughs> up your nuclear weapons. And they're like, cool, bet. And, <laughs> well. Funny how that works. We've seen how that goes. But yes, the ground-launched small diameter bomb, GBU-39. It is a rather wonderful little thing. And that's tell us a little about it, you beautiful Australian bastard. Well, okay. So Maybe basically, you if you guys know what a uh, JSAW is, joint yes, standoff website. Okay. Very, very simply, it is a mini little, mini little JSAW. Like, I'm going to put a picture in our chat here, which we will put up in post for our lovely, lovely viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but there you go in the uh, the old Discord group chat there. It is the GBU-39 small diameter bomb able to be deployed from the M270 MLRS or the M142 HIMARS. A Ooh. wonderful system. It is ground launched, as it says in the name. What is really crazy about it is its range. Hit me with it. I mean, I know this thing is accurate to within like half a meter. It is GPS supported INS. So yes, it, 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 it can you, it can fly for, it can fly around for about an hour. It is accurate to within half a meter. It is one of the most beautiful munitions ever built. I f- love it. Please, Google One, tell me its range. The range unclassified. Got to specify unclassified range of ninety three miles, or in the civilized world, one hundred and fifty kilometers. <laughs> so, I mean, you mean ninety three miles? I said what I said. Now, <laughs> you understand that when Ukraine gets these things, there is nowhere within occupied Ukraine that Russia can hide. Or Correct. even in uh, certain places in Russia. I mean, or even in certain parts of Russia, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that means logistics wide. I mean, look, our good friend here did a video about Russian strengths that everybody in my Discord got very doom and gloom about, you know, when, when he talked about, you know, about how much better Russian logistics have become. I kind of have to disagree with him slightly because, quite honestly, the most efficient part of Russia's logistics train is the f-ing train. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. these trains are still loaded by hand. No one in Russia is forklift certified. We're, we're talking bulky ass boxes with like two shells each pair, massive ass box. And now with these long range munitions available, these trains are going to have to stop even further away or risk getting blowing up. So Comrade Vatnik is going to have to load these things by hand onto a truck or as in cases that we're starting to see, civilian cars, probably stolen. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's more distance he has to travel. That's that's more wear and tear on the trucks. That's more fuel and a hell of a lot more time it's going to take to get that ammo to the front because, well, these ammo dumps either also have to be outside of Heimar's range and therefore miles and miles away from where they're actually needed, away from the front lines, or disguised as something else. Hence why we saw those Russian troops die in that one Heimar's attack when it turned out that their barracks was an ammo dump in disguise. <laughs> There's also a lot more of them distributed over a much wider area now, which is honestly, it's a better system than having just one big ass ammo dump, but it does mean you need a lot of trucks. And if there's one thing Russia does not exactly have, it's a lot of trucks. I mean, what they've lost like, what, two and a half thousand trucks at this point? They had to pull reserves from their uh, CSTO allies. If yes, I they did. Yes. They pulled, they pulled all of their modern Gaz 480s or whatever they were called there. Some Mazas, whatever they were called. I can't remember. I don't really give a damn about Russian trucks. A big green, <laughs> big green zil Zills. thing that is inferior to the Hemet and the Deuce and a Half in every single way. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Fucking five ton boys. <laughs> it really is. Honestly. It's like, seriously, it's just, it's it's a cab. It is, it is a World War II truck with a modern cab. Uh, I, I look yeah. at it, I'm like, yeah, all right, look, fine. The, the half ton truck, like two and a half ton truck, like missing yeah. gamers. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> forgive me for being, forgive me for being a, a, a bit of a shill here, but I'm going to say it. I've always had a motto, and this is this is the first episode of the even rounder table, so I think I should get my position out of the way first. I have a strict policy that while there is no ethical consumption under the current economic system, one has to be realistic if you want to buy electronics you buy japanese if you're smart if you want to buy an affordable car you buy japanese if you want to buy if you want yeah that's true if you want to buy high quality goods like high quality like you know kitchenware uh, like washing machines and such you buy german Sure. You buy German. Yeah. Always buy a German appliances if you can. Right? If you want to buy certain types of food, I hate to give them the credit, but uh, especially wine in Lazybig's case, you buy French. Especially if mm. you're buying cheese. You buy French or cheese. Or Lebanese, yeah. apparently. I am I am a Brie and Camembert fiend. I'm an aficionado of Camembert. I will, I will say to the French, yes, 
My point is, you go all around the world. If you want to go to burrito, you buy a Mexican. If you want to buy, if you want to buy, I don't know, um, uh, an umbrella, Britain, whatever. Everyone's got their, everyone's got their niche. If you want something dead, if you want something dead, or if you want to transport the means of making someone dead, you buy American. Hell yeah, brother! Simple as that. Hell yeah! Simple as that. Like I look at Russian gear and I'm like. It's cheap and it will do the job fine, but like, I I I I want an Abrams. I want a Nimitz. American a stuff is American stuff is expensive, but it will do the job even better. Now, I mean, I know I know the Abrams get shit on quite a lot, especially here in Europe. But I will admit, there is nothing wrong with it. It's a good tank. It's a really good tank. But this is what I I'm leading one. up to. And, Go for uh, it. There is one system. This system, the small diameter bomb, is incredible, and it will give Ukraine a lot of capability. They will wreck what's left of the Russian logistics system with this thing if we get enough of them to them, along with some more HIMARS if we can scrounge them up from somewhere. I think it would be a good move. Now, I talked about this with the aforementioned Perrin. We had a little conversation about it, and we memed the hell out of it. Ukraine has the AN-124. The Americans have just invented Rapid Dragon. Now, hear me out. <laughs> hear okay. Me out. Where, are you go- where are you going with this? The AN-124 has one of the largest carrying capacities, if not the, I think, with the destruction, the tragic loss of Mariah. Rest in peace. Um, the AN-124 has the largest carrying capacity internally of any transport aircraft. And the Americans have just developed a cruise missile system that deploys entire pre-programmed cruise missiles by pallet. Okay. The C-17 can deploy. The C-17 can deploy something like forty Jassims, um, joint uh, standoff munitions. So, basically, imagine a cruise missile version of the JSAW. If you don't know what that is, the Jassim is awesome. The Jassim's latest model, if I uh, yeah, the AGM-158 Jassim, the latest model, the Jassim XR, has a range of one thousand two hundred miles. The ER has a range of 575 miles. Rapid Dragon can put like 40 of them in a container on a C-17, and it can carry like three containers, right? Or two containers. Now, the AN-124 is a big aircraft. Now, I'm not saying that we could perhaps, I don't know, equip the Ukrainians (laughs) with an aircraft that can carry 100 cruise missiles. (laughs) But... (laughs) But, but oh, God now, there's no way it would ever get approved in Congress. Like, because that that is that is completely fantasy. But there is a little part in the back of my mind. Perrin and I were discussing it. What if? Just, just, just. What if? What if? What, what if? if? Hey, hi, that's a no, that's a nice <laughs> that's a nice Crimea you've got there. It'd be a shame if something uh, happened to it. The thing, the thing is. Ukraine and Russia are kind of stuck in that weird kind of deadlock, like because you, because Russia currently has artillery dominance over Ukraine. Like they have more artillery, they are basically able to point that artillery at whatever Ukraine is doing. So if Ukraine mounts a counterattack, if they count a major offensive, they will have all that artillery pointing at them. If they uh, try to fire their own artillery, we have seen it many, many times where they have to. Pack, they have to fire, then they have to pack up their artillery and move it within 90 seconds before Russian counter-battery hits them. The thing is, with stuff like that, and with the stuff that we are currently sending, I mean, I don't really know much about the, the Caesar artillery systems that we are now sending to Ukraine. They look goddamn impressive, and if they are anything remotely close to the AS-90 systems, which I am familiar with, then these are f- powerful of artillery systems these have the power to fire around pack up move uh move for move far away outside of um outside of retribution range and then fire again at the exact same target the exact same coordinates within those 90 seconds and the thing is if we keep giving ukraine this ability these weapon systems that can give them that counter battery advantage over russia that is going to make obsolete all the ancient sort of Russian systems that they have been pulling out of storage from, like, 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 like the the one 
uh, 20 millimeter cannons that have been pulling out of storage from the, like the 19, the oh, 1950s yeah. that mm-hmm. like Wagner group and stuff are using. And that is going to force them to rely on their more modern artillery systems that can, that can, that can shoot and scoot, which they don't really yeah. have a lot of. Yeah. It's basically, it's basically their self-propelled batteries that are the, uh, that are the sole domain that Gavotsky, Katsky and the, uh, um, Mr. Really, the only. I'm very glad that you can say the names because I can't. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm here. pronouncing them wrong. I'm I'm almost certainly <laughs> pronouncing them wrong. But uh, I mean, we'll give you a pass because you're trying. I, mean, uh, I, you know, I could not absolutely. I'll have trying. you know, I am a veteran of war game European escalation. I was a beta <laughs> tester. You know. Wargame bad dragon. Ah, uh, <laughs> I was a beta tester for European escalation. You know, a decade ago. Um, <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> I I will have you know that I started my career streaming war game brand dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. working the Siad Heli Rush combo for glory. They can't <laughs> stop us now. When you see those red four players forgetting to turn the guns off on their Tungaskas, f- noobs! You've got that Cyclops <laughs> missile, and you just leave your gun on like that for the next EF one eleven. Praise be upon him to fly over and just whack it with a harm. You're a bad <laughs> player, and you should stop. Hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> okay, off off topic, but yeah, look seriously though, the the big artillery uh, system that I've been looking at is the Archer from Bofors from Sweden. That oh thing God, is yes. not. I get hard looking at that thing just we all get i mean it gets hard when we look at it i mean <laughs> jesus christ look at the damn thing it's <laughs> it's it's f-ing beautiful it it can fire it can fire three rounds it can stop park select the target exactly precision gps guided munitions it even has excalibur capability i'm pretty sure I, actually yes it does it does yes um uh, it can stop hit three rounds at a target with GPS precision and then pick up and move again, it can fire those three rounds and move before the first round impacts. I don't know any other that can really, really do that. No, nah, the, the the Swedes are cracked, bro. To use yeah. to use the uh, unreal, use the gamer on God, on God, the Swedes are cracked, bro. For real, for real, for real, for real. like Boston. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, un- you under you understand the the reason that Ukraine cannot mount these any counterattack because as soon as they try to mount a counterattack, as soon as they lose momentum, as soon as they get bogged down in fighting, every single artillery piece that Russia has within range is going to be aiming at them, and it's going to be zeroing in very quickly, and it is going to hit them if they suddenly have to stop because they're getting bogged down in fighting. Without that advantage. Ukraine can mount, which is which is why Ukraine has not mounted like a major counteroffensive, and why it did not take advantage like during the winter when it had the power to do that. And without that advantage, without that dominance of artillery, Ukraine can potentially mount a huge counteroffensive. And I'm not entirely convinced what Russia can do to stop that. I mean, realistically speaking, the biggest issue that the Ukrainians have is the same issue that the Russians have. Fighting a war in Ukraine, if you look at it historically, fighting a war in Ukraine is a cast iron motherfucker. It is mm. awful. It's f-ing hard. It's, it's the Soviet infrastructure layout especially doesn't help. Because, I mean, I know like you, we, it's sort of like urban planning, but urban planning in the Soviet Union was very much centralized, like their state. Right, if you look at Europe or you look at like the United States, you'll see, like all things, like roads radiate from towns, right? They've got to go to different places. But you see this huge lattice network of different towns and cities, and there's about 17 or 18 different roads to any particular town, unless you're out in the boonie. In Ukraine and most of Russia, you've got two roads, tops, maybe a, yeah, a, right. a muddy third one, which is used in emergencies if shit hits the fan. And you can't use it in winter or spring or autumn. You're summer only, basically. Oh, unless it's you it can use it if you're trying to avoid toll booths and your your boyfriend happens to be driving a truck that can get through those f***ing muddy fields very quickly. And he says, yeah, we'll take these uh, shortcuts, but uh, we may have to sleep with a van for a bit. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> gotta bust the tools man i've been know? i've been i've been to russia i've seen what these roads are like i would describe them as a mud river 
<laughs> it wasn't nicer though. It was lovely. Uh, if I if I may quote the the arch Slav himself, the only true way of tackling these roads, you don't need a T seventy two, you need a larder with your speakers up and your windows down. <laughs> awesome. That is what you need, my friends. And, and also, well, well, maybe you can borrow some of Belarus's. They're still producing larders, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> big, are you saying you've spent more time in Russia than a certain um, GL person we know? Well. Funny enough, you say that. Probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> that much not really means have I spent more time in Russia. I have also f***ed more people in Russia than he has. Awesome. Well, it depends on what contextualization you're talking about. F because, like, uh, I mean, he couldn't get at me in Ukraine, so. Mm. I mean, well, I, I think I mentioned this in another stream of Digi, but I want to point out the only reason. Our mutual friend Gawanka Zarilla in Chilada was in Ukraine as well. Uh, okay, okay. How familiar are you guys with that sort of mid two thousands and ten YouTube commentary of how do I describe them? Pickup artists. Uh, okay, okay. If you, if you know what I'm talking about, people who were made these videos where they they kind of talked about how how like women are a game, and if you said the right things, you can basically just trick them into having sex with you. Ah, disgusting. yes. Absolutely disgusting. Right, well, one of them, I, I mean, I forget his name, uh, wrote about how these there's these poor Eastern European countries full of pretty women with low confidence. And, and you can show up in places like Romania and whatever, and even with just a few thousand dollars, and you can kind of pass yourself off as a millionaire, and you can basically con women into having sex with you. Because their families are so poor and desperate that, that you like taking them out to a nice restaurant is like the equivalent of like, like a girl who's lived in a shack in the middle of nowhere her entire life you know getting a ride in a private jet and the top country he mentioned as being the best place to pick up these kind of women was ukraine hmm. because, because ukraine was incredibly poor at the time i think this was around what, 2010 so this would have been when yanukovych wasn't yanukovych was it was it yanukovych hang on my, my brain done far was yanukovych the guy who runs who ran He's, he was the guy who got deposed at Euromaidan in 2014 is Yanukovych. So. Yes, he, okay, Yanukovych, also known as the Dube. That was his nickname, meaning block of wood. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, Yanukovych takes over, um, steals, bribes absolutely everybody, so th there's no investigation on um, the fact that he potentially cheated at the election. Um, potentially oh uh, yeah the potentially one, <laughs> the, one, the ukrainian people like people always talk about maidan they just forget the fact that the ukrainians had like three separate revolutions against this same dude and the last <laughs> one was just like you know what fuck your couch we're just we, we are just we're like <laughs> your couch well like we are we are done like they had like they were going through the rainbow. I mean, you're talking about LGBT represent representation. The the Ukrainians were going through the rainbow. They had yellow revolutions, orange revolutions. Eventually, they're just like, you know what? It's <laughs> Europe revolution. Euro my done. We are we are gonna make Jacobinism come back in a big way. Like <laughs> we have just taken like you know that massive tower they built in Maidan Square. It's just like yes, I know at, of it. At the very top, there's. No, it's not the goddess of victory or freedom. It's not the symbol of Ukraine, the the mother of the wheat fields. No, it is a guillotine with your fucking name on it, buddy. And he got out of <laughs> dodge real far. <laughs> like there was footage yeah. of him getting into that helicopter on CCTV. He's just like, oh god, no, it wasn't oh him getting onto the helicopter. It was him stuffing paintings yeah. and like like little statues and everything that he owned you need to understand this guy stole trillions from ukraine and he built himself this incredibly opulent six story high log cabin in the middle of ukraine that was his house let's eat him <laughs> eat the rich <laughs> and, i mean you want when he fled on that hind when he stopped it full of like paintings and figurines and whatever and fled to russia with the help of the fsb and his own security forces who instantly turned tail and became Russian and are now fighting for the Russian side in Ukraine. Um, because of course they are. Because of course they are. They stole, he stole everything from Ukraine. And by I mean, he emptied the treasury. When the, new, when the new Ukrainian government took over, they found 
Ukraine had in its treasuries the equivalent of about five thousand dollars. <sighs> everything that Ukraine had, all the tax money, everything was was filtered was was being filtered through a company called um, QuickSave. I believe it was called. This all came out in the Panama Papers. You can go read it up. Uh, Al Jazeera did a wonderful documentary about the whole thing where they followed the money all the way back. So it was filtered through a company called um, it was QuickSave or QuickServe or something like that. And Yakunovich sold this company to Russia for $100 million in a private jet, which he still has. For that, Putin made him an oligarch. He is one of the most powerful oligarchs currently in Russia. Uh, all the money that Ukraine had at the time, their entire treasury was handed over to Russia on a silver platter. And oh God, <laughs> absolutely I, disgusting. He's a thief and got away with it. Absolutely, yeah, he's a complete thief, and he got he got completely f***ing away with the whole f***ing thing. Russia, um, Ukraine has managed to reclaim about like just about a billion of that back from internal investigations but there there are trillions of it like absolute trillions completely missing from the ukrainian treasury they still have problems with corruptions they still have problems with people linked to yukonovich this is why you see zelensky randomly seeming to fire people left right and center from his government because these are people who still have connections to yakonovich and still have st still profiting off the, those early days th those days of corruption there are still politicians who are doing their absolute best not 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 to not to aid russia in taking over ukraine i won't say that far but in in terms of trying to secure their own wealth that is what they're they're that's what they're doing that's the vibe i get a lot or off of them the whole russian invasion like this is very unfounded but i feel like a lot of people who are pro russian have a very personal investment in this you're not you're not wrong because the thing is as russia is taking over ukraine those same russian oligarchs are coming in behind them and they're the ones buying up property they're the ones buying up businesses they're the ones buying up infrastructure they are basically at this point they if, if russia takes over ukraine in, in its entirety it will be the oligarchs who will own everything yeah I mean, when it comes down to it, it's like Russia legalized stealing. <laughs> well, if I, you're if not I, wrong. <laughs> well, if I may be, if I may be frank, I mean, it's not exactly the case, Falcon. For one simple reason is, I um, it seems a bit twee to, uh, as they say, to uh, quote Tom Clancy, but uh, warfare, aggressive warfare for occupation or extortion, etc., is is literally just. Uh, state endorsed armed robbery. It's literally all it is. It's, yes, it's, that's what I'm saying. It, it, and it's been going on like, I mean, I, I mean, the only one actually, it's, strictly speaking, the only person here who has any right to speak on the defensive on this issue uh, is Laser Pig because he's a Scotsman. Uh, Hello. He is a, a victim of colonialism. <laughs> yes. You're going to bring up the fact that England colonizes Scotland. Uh, in something I've always railed about, which is the English colonialism of Scotland and the fact that many of Scottish traditions are, in fact, English traditions disguised as Scottish traditions. Yep. Yes, which I, if you'll allow me one quick rant, that is a f***ing Cayley. I, <laughs> I cannot stand a f King Kelly, because they they, they 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 get these people out in these these f***ing kilts, and it's like a kilt from the waist down, and from the waist up, it's a f***ing waistcoat. And brogues, these shiny f***ing leather shoes. Where in Scotland would we would we have these ridiculous leather high heel shoes? It so happen? No, I have something. I have something similar on that note because out in America, like. Okay, let me okay. go ahead, go ahead. finish, <laughs> Sorry, and I'll let you <laughs> talk. If we are talking about Scottish <laughs> history, I could go on for hours here. Oh, this point. <laughs> I, I have something to add on to your hatred. Don't worry. Hit, hit me with it. Go for it. Okay, okay. So we have, quote unquote, Irish and Celtic festivals out here. Oh, God. Which oh, involves God. a bunch of boomers who think they're, you know, in touch with their heritage. <laughs> and they play, you know, shit like, uh, you know, bagpipes and, you know, Scout and the Brave. And at the same time, 
they're like waving Irish flags and shit. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Hmm. It's a sham. It's an absolute sham of people who don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I will say the bangers are good. The bangers are really good. Yes, they are. I will say <laughs> the tradition, um, the way you see a traditional Scottish outfit right now, with the f***ing waistcoat and the shiny shoes, <laughs> complete f- shit. A, a, an actual kilt is closer to a toga. And a Kelly is not an organized dance with traditional f- Scottish accordion music. For f- fucking sake. No one did that fucking dance around the fucking swords. That doesn't exist. It's not a thing, okay? As well as going <laughs> naked under the kilt. No one goes naked under the fucking kilt. Because Scotland is freezing. I'll tell you exactly where that fucking comes from. And that comes from fucking Queen Victoria's fucking own personal guard, who were all Scottish. And they all had to be naked under the fucking kilt because she demanded so. And that is where the tradition comes from. It is not an actual fucking thing. There was a Great War thing, too. There was a Great War thing, too. Let's not get into it, because we could be here all f***ing night. We're supposed, <laughs> we're supposed to be talking about Ukraine, but the fact That'll be remains... A thing. That'll be a thing. We're going to talk about this someday, though. A f***ing Kelly is not a, a series of strict dances with stupid names like the Gay Gordons <laughs> and everything. Like, play to f***ing accordion music and what have you. Uh, it is a gathering of clans. So all the clans would gather in one big room and there would be mock fighting, there'd be heavy drinking, there'd be storytelling, there'd be heavy drinking, there would be like what we now consider to be the Highland Games, like the caper toss and whatever, there'd be heavy drinking, there'd be uh, all sorts of bullshit, and there'd be heavy drinking. And if you've ever seen the film Brave, that is basically a Kaylee, what is going on there. Would there have been heavy drinking though? There would be very heavy drinking, yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> The thing is that that's that's a Kelly, and that that is what would happen. That was what happened in ancient Scotland and everything, with all these clans getting together and being under one roof. Uh, and I I really kind of feel that Scotland kind of needs to come back to that. Like we need to get rid of this because because Scottish traditions are not formalized. There is no formal rules of this is the tradition. This is what happens within that tradition. That's very English. That, that is how, that is how yeah. English traditions are again. Scottish traditions are very loose. They're very informal. They're very you showing up. There's lots of heavy drinking. And there's lots of whatever happens, happens. And we don't talk about it. If... The first rule about Kaylee Fight Club is we don't talk about Kaylee Fight Club. We don't talk about it. If you want to fight a guy with a log, you are more than welcome to fight a guy with a log. We don't give a shit what you do with that. Log. I can throw a log further than anyone else. Do it. Do it, Kevin. I want to <laughs> see it. I, I mean, the paper you toss was you have, to, you have to have the first laser pig uh, log throwing contest now. Hell yes. We're going to do it. You're all gonna, you're, I'm all going to invite you to Scotland and we're going to throw a fucking log. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I really do want to go to the UK someday. Like, I want to go out there and like visit. So uh, I think I, that's going to be a thing. I, I want to. I want to visit. I want to visit Scotland. The Republic of Scotland. Hey Hell yeah! Hey. <laughs> I would still want to go to South Ireland, but Down that would be with, a uh, bad thing. Screw my ancestors. Down with the Anglos. <laughs> Long live the cows. I'm defecting. <laughs> I can't say much because my dad was investigated by the FBI or the FBI for like IRA ties, so I gotta be careful. <laughs> I have only one thing. I have only one thing to say on that topic, Falcon. You know what it is? Hmm. Chucky Arla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Look, okay, so I know some Irish heritage, <laughs> but please enlighten me on that one because I'm, I'm still like a dumb white boy. Oh, love you, baby. Mrs. Thatcher. No, no one else can match her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So Maggie probably would not have been cool with this, but <laughs> <laughs> mommy Maggie. <laughs> you, you see, the IRA committed the worst crime yes. in British history. They did. Um, you might have heard of it. It's the uh, Brighton Hotel terrorist attack. Oh, it, yeah. it was one of yeah. the worst terrorist attacks in Britain. Um, the it was it's one of the greatest crimes, and I think that the IRA should answer for it. Um, they missed. Yes? 
They missed. They did miss. They, they missed. Like, if they'd gone a little bit to the left, you would have killed the entire Tory cabinet and saved Britain. <laughs> it would have been because... Because the, the bomb was in the bathroom <laughs> where they hoped that like she would be asleep in the bedroom upstairs, but no, she was working on her speech in the living room in the like uh, the lounge nearby, so she actually escaped the worst of the bomb. <laughs> so like hi, this podcast just got demonetized. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my girl Maggie T. Oh god. Not not my girl, but like, yeah. you know. Uh, Maggie T is a fun name for her. Yeah, Margaret Thatcher. Uh creator of Britain's oh, first gender neutral bathroom. It's, it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very much an if you know you know gag. All I'm gonna say is uh regarding old Maggie, uh Ding Dong the Witch is Dead was in the charts in Britain that week for the first time since the release of The Wizard of Oz, you know, in nineteen thirty-eight or whatever it was. <laughs> I will I will say I was around I was in, I was in Edinburgh, uh which is Scotland's capital. I put a stake through her heart and garlic around her neck to make sure she never come back. Not a pretty horrible thing to say when her funeral's going on right now. Too bad, too bad. When she died and her funeral was being broadcast, and they put up these massive, huge screens everywhere to broadcast her funeral to the nation uh, against her wishes because she always said she didn't want a state funeral. But, you know, we had David Cameron, you know, look at my big f***ing shiny forehead f a pig in the mouth, <laughs> David Cameron. Uh, that f***ing c***. Uh, <laughs> If who started if who started uh, his um, prime ministership by saying I'm going to reduce the deficit of Britain uh, and then managed to reduce it from like a hundred million to twelve billion or something stupid like that? <laughs> uh. Absolute fucking <laughs> the worst prime minister we have ever had until the next prime minister we had <laughs> who looked like. King Corella Deville, who happened to then took the championship of being the worst prime minister we've ever had since Pitt the fucking younger. <laughs> and then, just to top it all off, when she went down, brought in another prime minister who broke all the records of being the worst prime minister in the history of the nation. The previous record set by himself the previous week. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Shame the Boris Johnson. God damn, what an absolute legend that man was. Uh, uh, and then we then we had a f***ing prime minister who couldn't outlast a f***ing lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> who probably had advisors saying, please just hang on until at least the lettuce rots. And couldn't even do that. I'm pretty sure. And now we've got we now we've got a man who's who basically bought his way into the party because he's so fucking rich and fucking knows what he's gonna do. <laughs> I was still Christ on a bike. I was still holding out for Jacob Rees Mogg. I was still holding out. I was like, <laughs> look, just go all in, all in, all in with the monocle. All in with that fucking. Jacob Rees, the man who turned up to campaign for, <laughs> with his f***ing nanny. <laughs> oh, God. No, what like, the f*** he, was I talking about? He, <laughs> he goes in. He goes in. Remember that old tradition where you had to have a hat to raise a point of order in the parliament? Jacob oh, Rees Mogg yes. comes in. The first thing he does is reinstate that so only he can raise a motion. Because he's the only one at the top. So, oh, yes, I'm going to pass a new law. You can only propose a bill if you're wearing a monocle. So, ha! Ah, have at me! Our American viewers are going to be so confused. <laughs> oh, man. I'm... Basically, if you're living in America, this is why you declared independence. <laughs> yeah, dude. Seriously, I've... Look, I have had lonely nights where I've lasted longer than Liz Truss, all right? Look, let's be real here. <laughs> let's be real here. That was impressive. I love the fact that she basically walked in. She played a game of musical chairs where she walked in, rearranged all the chairs, the music stopped, and then she kicked all over the chairs. She kicked all the chairs over, set the chairs on fire, and then dropped the mic and left. <laughs> and she did that in the space of like three weeks. 
And then Rishi comes in, and yeah, you're right. I have no idea. As for Australian politics, don't go there. Uh, all I can tell you is we're doing a lot better now, and it's not just saying that because we've elected a uh, a left-leaning government, uh, which is my own personal biases. But more to the point, we have a prime minister who actually shows up to work. Because our last one, our last one was fantastic. You remember the bushfires back in 2019, 2020, over Christmas? I do, yeah. unfortunately, yes. Um, our prime minister wasn't there throughout 90% of it. <laughs> Why not? He was on holiday in Hawaii. Like, actually. Oh, okay, fair enough. He was actually... <laughs> the Americans, like, understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> just, 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 country's burning. The- Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, a second kangaroo has hit the bushfire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. Oh, it's... <laughs> a second Shahid drone is... <laughs> 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 The fact that, like, over... <laughs> the fact that, like, 12, like, something like over a billion Native Australian animals died, too. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> oh, I hope you guys like deep-fried koala, because, boy, let me tell you. I don't know how many bullfrogs died. <laughs> Not enough. Um... <laughs> Let me t- like. I wish the cane toads bought it. The other problem is all the areas that burn are all the dry areas. All the cane toads live in Queensland, and unfortunately, Queensland survived. Oh, that's a shame. In case you guys, again, to translate for you Americans, Queensland, Alabama. If we nuked Queensland, Australia would actually benefit on the whole. Yeah, a hundred. Mm, I don't know. I like the reef. We can rebuild the reef. It's fine. <laughs> My boy ZM lives in Queensland, so I I don't want him to get clapped. We can, we, we, can, we can just we can just sink a f- cruise ship <laughs> in that reef, <laughs> and it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> can we put Rishi on it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Rishi's cruise ship, or even better, Jacob Reese Monk's cruise ship. I'm sure he owns one. Oh, <laughs> he probably does. <laughs> no, it, oh my God, seriously. Our prime minister, in the middle of our worst national crisis since the Second World War, was on holiday in Hawaii. And as we all know, national crises and holidays in Hawaii are really good ideas. A hundred percent. It's always gone well before. Just like Camp David. Uh, Camp David. Uh, what do you call them? Vacations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. President Bush was on vacation during 9-11. No, he was at a school. He was at a school doing a like, reading of Where's My Girl or something. Well, let's be honest. If we're, ta- if we're talking America, being in the school for a national tragedy is kind of a... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh dear. dear. Oh, we no. went there. You see, you see what happens when my mouth gets away from me? Um, Lisa, but you cannot put this on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, but like, it'll be funny. <laughs> oh, God. We're getting, we're getting demonetized, boys. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, look, any, if we're talking national leaders, as we pointed out, like as far as national crises go, Yanukovych's was pretty good. Although Zelen- yes. Zelensky has got his has got a bit of one right now, and he's doing pretty well. He, he's yeah. He got interviewed by Letterman. Don't know if you all saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the interview, but he's. Let's the do world's more oldest f***ing Jew <laughs> interviews <laughs> another oh, Jew. No. Oh, no. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing the J word. Well, yeah. Please enlay me. <laughs> Zelensky's a Jew. <laughs> well, I know that. Just pointing like, that out. David Letterman yeah. is also a Jew. Yeah. It's I- really funny because... A- Former coworker of mine always called Zelensky a Nazi during the whole like initial invasion of Ukraine. He was like, "Oh, that Nazi!" And it's like, um, bro, he's uh, his guy trying to save his homeland, like just trying to live. You gotta pump the brakes a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I kind of want to hear Tucker Carlson's take on the whole thing. I don't. No, no, he will it. never give his. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 100 percent admit every time I see Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I have been. <laughs> I have I have, I have been watching Russian state media and I've been seeing the fucking travesty of a pantomime that that fucking thing is and watching this fucking woman I don't know her name I genuinely don't her name I wish I did so I could point her out to you 
but she she's on Russia's state media and she just advocates for Russia just to fire nuclear weapons immediately at Europe, just instantly. Just why do we have these nukes if we're not using them all the time? And she just looks like she is perpetually sucking cock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she is the equivalent. Her and like the three hosts that she's also with are just like the equivalent of the Russian Alex Jones. Oh man. <laughs> They are absolutely f***ing insane. And I contacted my ex-boyfriend about it, and he just said, yeah, that's entertainment, it's comedy. You watch that because it's funny. It, it, don't tell me people are taking that seriously. And I was like, my God! Gaspacho <laughs> Lefra actually took those people as a f***ing source! <laughs> and Russians think it's comedy! <laughs> <laughs> That's what, this is what really what? weirded me out. This is what really weirded me out. When some guy yelled at me on one of my videos for using the term Vatnik, because he was like, oh my god, that's a racial slur, how dare you? And I'm like... <laughs> yes, it is. Use it. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna use it anyway, but even if it was... Like, seriously, for the love of god, it's a term invented by the Russians themselves to describe someone who is... To use the vernacular that is so popular in the Western world for these types of people, cucked by the mainstream, excuse me, the lamestream media. Well, it's funny how it works, though, because, like, it's a term that, like, counteracts their entire argument. Yeah, well, this is the thing that... Anybody who uses that is invalid. Like, this is the thing that really gets me about the whole situation with all of the Russian media, is that... I find it remarkable that you have people like Perrin out there. I mean, people have... I find it really funny. I don't know if, Laser Pig, you feel the same way. We try really hard when we do videos about Ukraine because of how much the cause means to us. Yes. But at the same time, we are memeing and shitposting like we are now, and we're talking about the whole situation. And for God's sake, I know it's a 30-degree day, but could you turn off that lawnmower? Um... <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, it, it's like a it, summer for like, you right now, right? It's me, like every single person. As soon as it's sunny, every single person <laughs> is out mowing their f***ing lawn. It's in Australia. In Australia, the moment it's like in Australia in the morning, if it's like ten, if it's like if it's six a.m. and it's sunny, you get the leaf blowers, and then around eleven a.m., ten or eleven a.m. like now is when the is when the lawn mowers start, and they're at oh, it. God. Uh, but no, seriously. Um, the whole freaking thing. I get comments on my videos. I get comments on my videos, and I know you do, Laser Pig, uh, where it's like, honestly, Anamaki, you and Laser Pig are like some of the most reliable sources about the war. And I'm like sitting here, like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> how did this happen? How did this happen? How, how, how did we just? memeing on fucking Putin <laughs> actually become the most reliable sources of information. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I've, I've, I've released two, I've, I've done two videos in fucking Ukraine, not mentioning the one on, on the Moscow. I've got some more upcoming, but it's just like... It's a coping mechanism. <laughs> it's, like, a, it's, it's, oh my god. I don't, I don't understand. I want to, I want to finish my point on Tucker Carlson before we move on quickly, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because when I look at Tucker Carlson, I don't watch Fox News. I don't know why anyone would. But every time I see Tucker Carlson, he doesn't look real. Yeah, He right. looks like a second life avatar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Like like his, AI, like, yes, I, he, he looks like he's wearing a wig and he's got like all this makeup all over him. And I'm just going, okay, so this dude who looks like a, a fucking drag queen, you know, <laughs> This is the Sorry. guy that American conservatives are taking seriously. They look at him with all his f***ing makeup on and his fake teeth and his fake hair and go, yeah, that's that's the guy I want to take seriously. He's a real man. You know, what the f***? I, 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 I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get American politics. I've had people explain it to me and I just it just confuses me because none of it makes f***ing sense. I'm an American. I don't give American politics. Not gonna lie. <laughs> you know what the big problem is? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the big problem is. The problem is you didn't take your brain force plus this morning. That's what the problem is. Yeah, you, you've got all these beta males. You've got all these beta males out here who have been talking about how they don't understand. You see, if you want to understand an alpha like Putin, 
you've got to take your brain force plus yeah look sorry you I've, gotta if you want to be based on red pill you gotta yeah 100 percent. yeah dude like that alex jones impression like m- one of my friends uh the co-host of the other podcast i'm on the anime roulette podcast oh uh-huh. plug <laughs> still. is is that a plug that is a plug <laughs> Shell. I'm a shill. I'm shilling my own shit. It's only it's like a showing and shilling. Yeah, it's a and small shilling. channel with like 1,200 subscribers. No, um, <laughs> my friend, my friend Ivy and I, Ivy the beautiful boy. Um, no, seriously, the man should be a model. Uh, it's not gay if you think Ivy's hot. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Dude, no, 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 no. Continue. Um, he is part of the weird community he's part of a podcast group a syndicate if you like called knowledge fight and their entire job is to document and counter the misinformation spread by info wars and groups like it <laughs> and the problem <laughs> and the problem is that means my poor friend ivy you know, this historian philosophy major trying to get through life <laughs> spends when he's not like um, <clears throat> uh, legally translating and typesetting various forms of Japanese cartoon media uh, in a book oh. format that is definitely legal. Weird. When he's not doing that, he is listening to Alex Jones and he does this voluntarily just so he can understand. And I'm just sitting here like, why? Why? Why why would you do this? Like, I, as you, most of the audience probably know, I pulled an all-nighter. I sat for two and a half hours listening to this Scottish dipshit over here argue with an even bigger dipshit. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I sat here. I sat here. And listen to that for two and a half hours. <laughs> well, I, I seriously genius, apologize <laughs> to anyone who had to listen to that entire podcast. <laughs> that entire thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just a fucking shit show. I, I, I mean, I, I will admit from the second that he started, when I, when I said, okay, I'm not pro-NATO, I'm pro-Ukraine. And he came up with this, oh, you're pro-Zelensky, that means you are pro-NATO. And I was like, okay, we've, we've, uh, people, we've become crazy early. And I just yep. immediately opened the first bottle of wine. And before Destiny left, I was on the second bottle of wine. I was so <laughs> fucking pissed. I mean, I, I, I talk about in my response video about how, you know, I was just trying to stay calm and everything. And I wasn't particularly good at debating and everything. I was like, no, I had notes prepared. I had like everything that I thought he was going to ask me. And I had responses to it all and everything. And I had like Nafel giving me like, like heads up and everything. Everything that he said that I didn't have an answer to. Nafel were sitting there in a private discord, just feeding me answers and potentially what he might say and everything. And like articles that I could reference everything. But I was so fucking drunk. I just couldn't. I just, I just couldn't. I just sat there <laughs> laughing at him because there was it's nothing okay. else I could do but just watch this fucking degenerate f- asshole just sit there and label me a monster as he's telling me that Ukraine needs to fucking bow down to Russia and just let them f- them in the ass and genocide a third of their population and work fucking wipe out their fucking history to replace it with their own fucking version that Putin wrote about in his fucking little oh I'm a historian now fucking article that he wrote right at the start of this fucking war. I was like, oh, I'm I'm fucking sorry. I believe in the sovereign right of fucking nations. I believe in the right of people to defend their own fucking property. I believe in the right of nations to defend themselves against the imperialist yoke of other fucking nations just deciding that they want their best fucking farming land and all their fucking coal and iron ore resources, you know? How fucking dare you? Yeah, I fucking fuck you. This is too many fucks for fucking YouTube. You're evil. Yeah, well, You're so fucking yeah evil. look, like we're, we're screwed at this point. I mean, trash taste get away with it, so maybe we can. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit too. <laughs> maybe it's a bit too get extreme. Away with it. I mean, they're an anime podcast, so maybe like, oh, it's just what are you doing? We're memeing while talking about a war. Well, fantastic, but no, like seriously, for the love of all that is holy, I am sick. And okay, time for a Pac-Man rant. 
Now I know a, a lot Go. of a lot of the members of NAFA and a lot of people out there, for obvious historical and cultural reasons, are not too fond of the uh, political left, as it were. But let me just sort of put my uh, Ushanka on for old time's sake oh, God. and bring this up. You f- red. As someone on the political left who sits here and supports Ukraine, it is hell for me. Because I look at what Russia's doing and I go, this is blatant imperialism. If you hold a position of anti imperialism, you must be against Russia categorically without, without like reserve. You must condemn the Russians for what they're doing. You have to, as a matter of principle. But you will get these freaking Stalinoid douchebags who have read one book, (laughs) one book. (laughs) They have read one piece of theory. And even if it's like, and it's probably not even a good one, right? They probably didn't even read State and Revolution by Lenin or anything like that. No, 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 no. They read like Stalin's dog shit excuse for a book that he released, like, I don't know, in 1938, as a freaking, uh, like, hey, look, I'm an intellectual, I can write books too. It's not like I'm a <laughs> bank robber. I'm just as good as that Trotsky guy. No, seriously, for the love of God, they've read one book, and suddenly it's like, okay, now we've done this, Russia is actually the reincarnation of the Soviet Union, and by taking this stance against NATO and the United States, they are by default anti-imperialist, and therefore everything they do is justified. And I'm sitting Still- here, and I'm like, you do real like the thing is, if you look throughout the history of the Soviet Union, the one of the big things that Lenin wrote about in his like Lenin, the reason why Putin went on a big tirade against the Bolsheviks uh, when he started this war is because. Lenin acknowledged the sovereignty and rights of the Ukrainian people to choose their own destiny. Now, granted, that went completely out the window the moment the Bolsheviks got any sense of military power and annexed the Ukrainian People's Republic, because while you were socialists, yes, uh, you're not the right kind, and so, well, you need to be taken under Moscow's wing to make sure you develop correct Marxist ideals, because we all know how that goes. Every Marxist-Leninist state is the same. But... The thing is, Imperial Russia had a policy called Russification, where they would invade an area, or excuse me, uh, stabilize a, lo- a neighboring region. Excuse me, sorry, just have to be uh, have to be correct here. They you la- get it f-ing right. Yeah, exactly. They had to launch a special Tsarist military operations to stabilize neighboring regions, like Finland, for example. Um, and then the moment they get in there. Like, if you look at Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, you look at the Stans, like Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, you look through all of these areas. Every single one of these areas has a unique and beautiful culture stretching back f***ing millennia. Languages, too. And yet, during the Soviet Union, during the so-called crusade against the imperialism, Russia did what it always does. It trampled their history, trampled their cultures, and forced them to write Cyrillic, and forced them to adopt Russian as the national language. And so I cannot stand, not only people on the political left, but Russian stands and Vatniks and all these can't say that word on YouTube, all these people in general, <laughs> awesome. all these people in general who say this shit, like, oh, it's anti-imperialism. It's uh, protecting Russia's like uh, security and national right security. To exist. No, you're commit, you're committing an act of literal genocide. The U- the United Nations defines exactly what Russia is doing right now as genocide. The orphaned children killed by Russian artillery strikes are being kidnapped, flown to Russia, and forcibly rehoused with Russian families and forced to speak Russian. They are forced to learn Russian history in Russian schools with Putin's educational slant. 
That is genocide. And Russia and later the Soviet Union has been doing it for hundreds of years. And these people have finally gotten a chance, have finally gotten a chance to have their own say. 1991 came around, and yes, there are a lot of political groups in Ukraine which maybe we shouldn't be uh, friendly about. But on the whole, this is this is what happens. It happens in every country. They are a young democracy. They have the opportunity to be their own country. And not even 20 years have gone by. Not even 20 years have gone by. And suddenly that is no longer valid. They're not their own state. They're not their own culture. Uh, no. So anyone, anyone who can honestly stand here, anyone who defends... The Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's not a political issue. It's a matter of human decency. This is an act of genocide. Rant over. Fuck. I I completely agree a hundred percent with you. This is this is this is exactly what this this is exactly what they're doing. This is what they've always done. I mean, if you look at Ukraine now, what is their national language? Their national language is Russian. What is what are, what is all their news sources broadcast in? They're broadcast in Russian. Their culture is Russian. They're, this whole thing that they have tried to do over the last 10 years is recapture what they once were. Recapture their own culture. Recapture their own language. Put road signs. Road signs in Ukrainian instead of Russian. And the Russian foreign minister, I've forgotten, forgot, forgotten his name, uh, described this. Described putting the Ukrainian road signs in the language of Ukrainian instead of Russian as a f act of genocide. Uh, I, I just uh, want to say this part. So Kraut on YouTube, a uh, fantastic channel. He's got some great content. He put a video out called The Ideology of uh, Putin's Russia Up. And Putin really is in bed with this guy who, uh, his name is um, Ivan Ilyin. And he's not, he wasn't a communist. He was very cool with Stalin back in the day and, you know, Lenin and all them during the revolution. But he was very much a fascist who had this idea of Russia could never do wrong. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing this ideology of Ivan Ilyin being put into the mainstream. Uh, and it's, it's fucked. Like if you, if you look at this video, um, I'm, I'm sure Lisa Big, if you put the uh, video in the description, it'll. Thank I you. absolutely will. Yes. It's, it's f***ed. like Ilian has this idea of a very pure, um, can do no wrong Russia that has this like divine protection about it, and it's just it's wrong. It's it's like I can see where Putin gets this idea that they can invade this country and take it over and, um, be absolved of any possible consequences during the uh, during the invasion. It's just disgusting. I think uh, if you'll allow me to rant for a few minutes, there is this idea which is summed up in the idiom of, you've heard of the grass is always greener on the other side. So I think a lot of people kind of buy into this too much. And there's this idea that there will be better, that, that like things will be better in other countries, countries like Russia and China, because to a point we only ever hear bad stuff. Uh, about about them and their governments and the way they control things about how the dictatorial they are and and all this kind of stuff has like a subliminal effect kind of giving them this appeal as kind of rebellious to support russia and china as rebellious to hang a chinese flag and hang a picture of the chairman on your wall because not only are you exploring an entirely new culture that you've almost had no exposure to it can always be kind of fun it, it's kind of fun to see how shocked people are that you're kind of doing this. It's it's like watching all the adults clutch their their pearls in horror when when you hang a like a Russian flag outside your wall, and it's that that feeling of being very rebellious. It's very exciting. It can also awaken that sense of adventure and exploration within you that 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 this is a forbidden land beyond the veil of of what the government doesn't want you to know. Whereas. Like in reality, you can jump on a commercial flight to China or Russia anytime you want. You don't have to fly to South Africa and get a new passport and then be smuggled into China via a fishing boat that only travels at night and you will be meet under the bridge by the monk and everything. You know, now the only questions people will have you if you want to fly to China is like, what's your gate number and what would you like to drink? You know, it's 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 so people kind of latch onto these ideals and then they slowly dig further down that rabbit hole. And I mean, yes, there is a, a bit of a sense of hope that like some authority has noticed you doing this and they're they're pleased at your support and maybe you maybe you'll be rewarded and favored slightly. I, I kind of see that a lot with like 
Darabus, like they latch on to the Third Reich, and not because they're Nazis, not because they, they love Hitler and everything, and they, they want to destroy all the Jews and everything, but because they, they've become seduced by this example of professionalism, of power, of the ecstatics of fascism, and that kind of simplicity that it offers. Like, like they're, not, they're not Nazis, they're just doing it for a bit of fun. And you either kind of grow out of that or you don't. And when you don't, that's when you have problems. And in relation to things like Russia and China, when you live in America, you are constantly berated by this sense of hopelessness. You see all the problems that America has. You see all the issues mm -hmm. and, and all the shit that people have to face on a daily life yep. and everything. And there's, 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 it, it overwhelms you that there's this feeling that there's just no way out of that. I mean, because no side, I mean, this is me going to my neutrality sitting on the fence fucking centrist bullshit side there's no side has a, a, offers a, a fix to what is currently going on in america all, all they want to do is just virtue signal to their prospective voters over this culture war that everyone is absolutely completely fucking obsessed with fighting because you know it's it's it's, it's easier to it's, it's easier to say oh god oh no man spreading man splitting than like deal with like the problems that that women in their 30s have in the workplace and shit um and then you add to this the news we get from Russia and China that these are two countries which care, these are two countries which care very highly about their own image and how that image is perceived by people overseas. And typically, what you end up with almost unintentionally is comparing the absolute worst of America, your situation, your crappy job, your shitty apartment, with its exorbitant rent against this vision of this clean air, these these modern cities where everyone looks dressed and clean, and there's there's a fun nightlife and everyone looks happy and we're told there's a very fair system in place that rewards the just and from our limited per per from our limited perspective we see this as the grass being greener on the other side and in this case the grass is greener in russia you kind of get what i'm saying yeah here. yeah it yep. is it is i find that a lot of that um kind of mentality like at least uh, not at least not so much towards Russia, although you find that rather unsurprisingly, a large number of the supporters. I remember when I did um, a video, um, one of my most successful ones, which was discussing the the war from Russia's perspective, like Russia's propaganda narrative. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I and I talk about. And I talk about how the West is presented in Russian media. And they had this comedy advert where it called the West out for wokeness. <laughs> oh, God. How we had to kneel and worship an African-American man because we wronged his ancestors. And so we now must kiss his feet. And, and, how, and how there's a lesbian couple in front of the, the wholesome Russian family unit. And that's somehow disgusting. And because she looks very masculine, it's assumed that she's a man. So, but we can't assume her gender. And it goes all of, all on that sort of track. Anyway, what I found most striking is on the channel which I used to find this video. There's a couple of uh, Russian uh, escapees on YouTube, quite famous ones, like Roman N K R F R Z. I think his thing is. I can't remember. Roman, living in Georgia, fled the draft, got out of Dodge. Um, he's got like over a million subscribers. He was a YouTuber before all this went down. He he blasted that on his channel, right? And I found it and used it and found out about it there and used it on my channel for this video. And the thing is, it really tells you a lot about why there's a lot of what sector politically a lot of the support for Russia comes from, uh, because a lot of the people in the comments said, oh, yeah, your video was a really great breakdown and uh, uh, Putin was really, really evil and this is all good. But you know what? That ad criticizing wokeness is absolutely correct. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> like every third comment was like, like I'm I'm scrolling through these I'm I'm scrolling through here is uh, like just checking these comments like Mr. Roger Gibson five days ago. 
That was the woke Marxist's worst propaganda video I've seen, Lamau. You are definitely one of those woke Marxists. That's a good one. <laughs> good one. Uh, am I a woke Marx? Am I a woke Marxist? Um... Well, I, d I don't know because your display profile picture has you standing in front of the anarchist flag. So yeah, not gonna lie. I mean, that's pretty pretty telling. I I'm, I, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 may, I may have may have jumped some conclusions. Yeah. Here. Could it be that I am a syndicalist? We have jumped to some conclusions like, here. My whole position is screw the state and your boss. Like that's literally it. Like, I don't like people telling me what to do. So when I see someone rolling tanks into someone else's country, I'm like, eh, that's a bit fucked. It's going to be real, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that brings up a good point I want to make. Oh, Look, now this I, I won't stand for. Mr. Andrew W., I don't know where he's from, <laughs> says, guess this is a liberal channel, lol. I take offense, good sir. How dare you call me a liberal? Anarcho-communist. You've got like yep. a fucking anarchist, a fucking centrist, and a fucking yeah. conservative in a fucking channel. But apparently, we're liberal now. <laughs> yeah, we're liberals. We're liberals. Oh no. <laughs> so I, I want to say this: like, you have a very <laughs> um, colorful cast of characters tonight, gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I should say, laser pig. I can only I can only guess what he is, you know. Yeah. Anim Animarchy is Hello. you know an anarcho capitalist or anarcho. Oh, sorry, no, oh, my bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. An anarcho communist. <laughs> <laughs> now I am triggered. Jesus oh, Christ, yes, anarcho -capitalism. don't trigger him. An anarcho communist, ah, my no, friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm oh sorry. yes, anarcho capitalist. Excuse me. I want to purchase my recreational <laughs> McNuke in exchange for that. Can I lower the age of consent? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are you? What are you, a libertarian? <laughs> I was going to oh. briefly explain that joke to people who don't understand. Oh, In Scotland, you know Count Dankula, he's a member of the Libertarian Party of Scotland. Uh, their primary policy is to lower the age of consent. Oh, <laughs> God. The age of consent in Scotland is 16 years old. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, um, we got Laser Pig, who's pretty pretty cool. We got um, Anamarchy, who is an anarcho communist, and we got me anarcho syndicalist. There's a bit of a difference. Okay, fair enough. You got you got the red and the black in your flag. You know, you know what I'm saying. I but like unions. That's fine. And you got me, who's you know white boy american but like this war has been going on for an entire year we have seen the destruction of a lot of innocent people we've seen their homes taken we've seen lives shattered and there's a lot of people who really support the idea of taking those lives taking that home from them and it's disgusting it's it really is disgusting and i don't really remember the point i was trying to make here but i can quite frankly I can... those people yes i get vibe i think what we're going vibe the reason like you're bringing up the political stances of the group here is you've got uh you've got someone with you've got a libertarian an american libertarian with slightly Kinda. leanings uh you have laser pig arch centrist chaos demon <laughs> you have you have me you have me very much staunchly on the eat the rich train like my favorite video of Laser Pigs is titled "Eat the Rich," right? So it's how I, it's how I like that's actually the video I subscribed on. Believe it or not, it wasn't the T. I was a I was the guy in the comment section. The T thirty four. I <laughs> my sword against you, sir. No, but like, but I think what's more important, and I think the point the Falcon's trying to get is the reason why this table works so well. This even rounder table is the fact that you have people from all sides of the political spectrum, from all po corners of the world, and we are united in one position. F*** Putin. F*** yes. him. F*** this war in general. Sevastopol by Christmas, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's yep. go. We'll do it. Attack him to blast the Kerch Bridge. We going in. I mean, I'd be completely <laughs> fucking honest with you. If this, if this was in Britain, even if it was, even if they were attacking England, if I was hearing stories about how 
there was like they found mass graves outside of Manchester and like people in London had fled their homes because of the bombing and everything and in return to find like other like people from other nations had been moved into their property and just helped themselves to all their stuff and everything that I, I can't even begin to explain how angry that thought makes me. Yeah. And just how angry I am at the entire situation. Nothing has made me so f angry than what is currently going on in Ukraine. And even when I heard of what was going in Maripol from like like I've got I've got contacts that I've been speaking to and they are from the Ukrainian resistance movement. Like within Russia controlled Ukraine, temporary occupied Ukraine, as it were. And I was speaking to them. I won't tell you their names or what they were doing because that's OPSEC, but just the shit that was going in Maripol, where we had wild dogs running around Maripol with like human remains in their mouth, digging through the, oh, yeah. digging through the fucking rubble and everything. And then, and then Russia just comes along and just shifts all the rubble to the side, and then builds these shitty apartments for like the remaining people to live in and everything. And all these people are still buried down there, and they'll never have a proper grave and everything. And it, it just, it just, it, it just fills me with so much intense anger. I can't even really describe it to people how I feel. And like, if this was my country, that I would pick up a gun and I would fight for the freedom of my country and i don't i don't fucking care if i'm old and i'm fat and i wouldn't do well in the army i would dig trenches i would fill sandbags i would patch wounds i would give water out i would drive trucks all day i would do whatever it fucking takes to secure the freedom of my fucking country against fucking ass wanks like that and to be honest every single person in ukraine feels the fucking same and fuck anyone who disagrees it is not their decision if Russia or not should win this. It is Ukraine's decision what happens to their country. And if they say, we do not want Putin ruling over us, we do not want Russia here, then that is up to them. And if they want to die with a fucking gun on their hand, defending their home, their fucking family, their property, that is up to them. And I will be honest with you, if that is their decision, I say, let's give them a bigger fucking gun. Yeah. Hell yeah, Way man. bigger. We need way, like... We at the moment, that's one of the biggest angles of this project right here. We want more guns. <laughs> Bigger well, guns. Here's here's what I want to say to all Americans listening to this. The Ukrainian people are fighting for what exactly the right wing wants to like advocate for. Second Amendment, you know, self-defense, yeah. having guns. I think I, I think I, I think I, I think I said it in my my response video. You know, most right wingish people will if like someone invades your house and yes. threatens your family. Are you going to sit there and and like have all your neighbors tell you just let, just just let them have the house? You know, it's 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 fine. You know, it's it's easier to just let them have what they want. It's it's fine. You can get another house. It's okay. No, no, yep. you wouldn't fucking do that. What you would do is you would go out. You would pick up your fucking AR-15 or whatever, and you would fucking atomize that intruder's head against the fucking wall. I agree. 100%. That's what I would do, and that's what I advocate for all of my American friends who feel that they have, you know, Second Amendment rights. That's what we need to fight for right now. Yeah. The, the rights you have in America should be extended to the Ukrainian people. Oh, it's, it's, it's more than that. I think what's really important is that right now there's more there's more to it than that there is a sense of collective responsibility and there's one thing that we've seen in a, from a lot of groups so the big one that i saw recently uh which i mentioned in my latest ukraine video which was the ukraine newsreel uh was alternative for germany Alternative for Germany are a far right political party in Germany. And they they were the staunchest opponents to sending leopards to Ukraine. They were the staunchest opponents. Fucking figures. <laughs> and then you look, you look at their protests that they had when they stormed the Reichstag, right? Uh like this was after January 6th and they got ideas, I suppose. And they, they stormed the Reichstag, and one of the banners they were holding, I shit you not, 
had a Russian flag and a German flag with like freedom and brotherhood written on it, like in the middle, and they were waving Russian flags. And then you, Roman, the guy I was mentioning about before, has a video on his channel he did recently where he talked about people who bought into uh, Russian propaganda and moved to Russia, right? And he was like, what do they all have in common? Oh, Russia is a country that was founded on Christian values and it oh, values God. the family and it's Love conservative. Christ. And you see all this sort of thing. For a country that's supposedly doing a lot of denazifying, I see an awful lot of anti-Semites being pro-Russia. For the same time, Figures. when you're talking about when you're talking about um like I saw an interview done regarding LGBT rights in Russia where they were like, oh, they did an interview with this kid and he's like, oh, as a gay teenager in Moscow, I can't take the metro a lot of the times. Oh, why is that? Oh, because in the metro, there are neo-Nazi street gangs that beat me up for being gay. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, oh, and what is your primary uh, auxiliary unit that you use to shore up the Russian armed forces? Oh, it's it's called the Wagner Group. Oh, oh, figures, right? Why are you called the Wagner Group? Oh, it's named after Richard Wagner. Oh, why is that? Oh, uh, no, no, no reason. And then you look at their their field commander, not the founder, but their field commander. The guy has SS collar tabs tattooed on his collarbones, right? Yep. And he has a Wehrmacht eagle tattooed on his over his heart, right? And you look at this, and then you have Putin saying he's denazifying. So. Putin is like the farthest from a communist like you could ever imagine. Which is really funny because you see Fox News. <laughs> oh like, yeah, Fox News is a joke. Like, but like you, like Fox News is relatively pro-Russia, but like when you see people screaming at the Russians, they're calling them communists, and I'm like, no, I, 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 they're oligarchs. They all, you know, those one percent that that Bernie Sandals dude keeps rambling <laughs> against on television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putin is the top one of the top one percent. He is like one of the wealthiest men in the world. So, did I bring up Ivan Ilyin? I can't remember. Uh, yes, you did. Okay, thanks. Okay, cool. Because you've got him, but you've also got the other fun one, Alexander Dugin. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I am Dugin pilled. No, seriously, getting Dugan pilled is one of the favorite sentences I've heard in recent years because Ivy, my mate, was and I were talking, and his dad's like coming comes in to talk to him. His dad's a bit of a conservative kind of guy. And he's just like, Oh, I've been looking at this uh Russia Ukraine conflict. You know, they're very culturally similar. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> and, just, and then if he's just, uh, if he, so I'm sitting there and if he just jumps on Discord while I'm sitting there working away and he just jumps in, pack. I'm like, what? And he's like, my dad's Dugan pilled. And I had to stop. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my dad. Oh, my God. No. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Alexander, du like, you know, the only way that this would be better is if you had some obscure Russian philosopher come out of nowhere and just be like, all right, guys, I know it was kind of bunked, but hear me out. Not the Aryan Superman, but Slavic <laughs> Superman, and not just world ice, but galactic ice. <laughs> hear me out, bro. Like, I mean, I'm still a, I'm still a shooter for my boy like, uh, Zar Nicholas, so yeah. No, no, you see, you, you, <laughs> you see, you see. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, you know that sci-fi series, The Expanse. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, seriously. Like their 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 concept of the world ice theory is the belt. Like they like reclaim the belt for Russia. Oh like, my God. <laughs> think about it. Like, I, I'd watch that. Like I don't know about you. I'd watch. <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it'd be like that North Korean Top Gun. Like. Could you imagine Belter? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've Could you that. imagine Belter Creole just Russian? It's like some dude from Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> Some dude from Siberia who just throws random Kazakh and Mongolian in there every now Jesus and then. Jesus Christ. What?
yo, that would like that would be impre- like the uh, that or oh, man, man. Like I don't know what kind of tangent that was, but all I know is I think Alexander Dugan and then I think crazy Russian nationalism, and my brain goes wild, man, because there's just no yeah. nationalism, nationalism, especially of the Russian kind, is like there's no end. One thing I really love about Putin's propaganda is that this man, this this whole regime took Hitler and Goebbels' playbook of the big lie and said, no, like, you've seen Spinal Tap? Like, turn it up to 11? Nah, fam. Nah, fam. <laughs> like, th- like you, you look at the Western outlets, right? You look at the Western media outlets, and we're all like, oh my god, we need to stop sending arms th- to Ukraine because we want to prevent World War Three, And then you switch over to Russian TV, and their lead host is like, all right, so today we're going to talk about why we should nuke Washington. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Bring it. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Bring it. Мы что, не можем наконец нанести удар по Лондону? В чем проблема? Не-не-не, только по военным объектам. Ну и по парламенту. Без раздумия. Ракетно-ядерный по Киеву. Разве нет? Да у нас все время раздумья, и сегодня... Ну, может, хватит раздумывать? Хватит. Если мы уже на полном серьезе говорим про Шебекина? Господин Короченко очень хорошо сказал в перерыве. Дайте возможность нанести удар по центрам решений. В чем дело? Какие проблемы? Если бы вы дали Короченко, мы бы уже давно несколько раз Лондон уничтожили. А потом раз пять Вашингтон. Правильно, Игорь and i think it's i think it was a i was thinking it was a Perron video he came out with the, the fact that like like smaller european nations like the netherlands like fucking britain like like fucking scandinavia sweden and everything like we constantly call putin's bluff he constantly states like oh yeah if, if you send fucking tanks to ukraine we'll fucking nick you and then britain sends tanks to ukraine sends like 15 challenger twos to fucking ukraine and nothing happens putin has nothing to say on it there's no nukes hitting London right now. It, it's just like we're constantly calling his fucking bluff all the fucking time. He's not going to nuke us. He is. He doesn't have the capacity no. to do so. He doesn't have the fucking no balls. balls to do it. Hell yeah, no balls. The thing is, we can just park a submarine. I mean, I mean, you get it like a Sea Wolf or a Virginia class submarine or whatever, whatever the British one is called. I completely forgot. The Trafalgar. The Trafalgar. The Trafalgar. No, the Trafalgar is the old one. I think the new one is called the Vanguard class, I think. Like, unimportant. Anyway, these are some of the most beautifully crafted pieces of naval machinery in the world. Some of the stealthiest things imaginable. The thing is, we can park one of those things off the coast of Russia and just start lobbing nukes at Moscow because, you know, you know what? It's, it's, not, it's not a case of they fire their nukes and then wipe out Washington or London or whatever, and then that's the end of Western civilization. We gave it our best, guys. Russia won. Bye. No, it's, it's they fire their nukes. We fire our nukes back, and then the world ends. And I don't think Russia is stupid enough to invite nuclear Armageddon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're already taking a huge gamble that NATO hasn't spent the past 60-odd years working out how to shoot down Russian nukes specifically aimed at them. I mean, this is, of course, assuming that every Russian nuke works and hasn't been sold off to Boris and his friends down the Workers' Union Club, like the rest of their army. I don't know. I, I, look, I, I don't know. I, I'm in the market. I'm in the market. Like, I'd love to see... Like, I could buy a Satan missile. I don't know where I'd put it. <laughs> put it in the backyard. Put it in your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, you got like my neighbor's gum tree is sitting there. It's like, oh look, the peaches are nice. How are you, Mister Pac Man? Oh yes, just behold my intercontinental ballistic missile. It's a lawn ornament. Did you take the warhead out? No, it's no. Still there. <laughs> He's just sitting there like James May with a fucking lighter, just. Like, <laughs> This is my drop bear fail safe. I've got a plan, man. <laughs> All else fails. I'm taking I'm taking my hometown with me. They're like, oh right. You can get a no. drop bear. You get a drop bear in your house. You may as well just nick it. There's there's, there's <laughs> yeah, no way you're coming uh, back from that. There's no way to survive. Drop bears are deadly. They they are scary, scary creatures. That's fine. 
honest to God, like with all the news recently, there's a re- like, it, okay, you want to know something? I, I'm a lie. I'm a sham. I'm a complete sham. You know why? I'll tell you why. Everyone talks about like, you know, I'm I'm woke. I'm a pinko. You're a pinko degenerate. I'm a pinko degenerate. I'm woke. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you one thing. If you lived in Australia, you'd be woke too. Why? You guys have seen all the trouble a balloon can cause. Imagine... <laughs> Imagine being their biggest trade partner, their largest supplier of natural resources, and being less than a thousand miles away. How do you not like dress as the Joker every day? No, like no, seriously, I've I've got I've I've got to get this across to you. I'm not I'm not a wokeoid lefty loser for the I mean, sake of it. I'm playing you're lefty, I'm playing but like, twelve. You play a character, I'm, and yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. playing twelve D chess right now. Oh the God. the moment. I'm playing 12-dimensional tic-tac-toe, actually, all right? I'm telling you right now, the moment the Liao Ning comes over the, o- over the, <laughs> over the horizon, <laughs> I'm out there. I'm a party man. I'm a okay, party man. Okay. I'm listening. We're, I'm listening. <laughs> we're, I'm a party man. Was, ah, yes. I have been upholding Xi Jinping thought from the day I was born. <laughs> You're the new Soviet man, as was described yeah, back the in the 50s. Cow. I, I'm a new Soviet man. <laughs> I even built a I even built a shield around my reactor. Everything's oh fine. Oh my god! No, I I've got to actually concur with Laserpick about the submarine fleet. I like I remember. I think it was in like it was when Trump was um, going over to Syria to do a little trolling, as it were, as he <laughs> does. Yeah, as he does. And Even there now. was that massive international incident because uh, there was a Victor submar- a Victor class submarine in the area when they were conducting those operations, and it surfaced and was like there, like we're Russia, we're big, we're scary. I remember looking at the photos of that Victor class submarine. Um, if I can find it, I hear glasses clinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's oh, fine. Boy. This Lebanese submarine. wine is absolutely delicious. I have to admit. I didn't realize they made wine, but I'm fucking glad they do. Yeah, what's the brandy? You gotta send me some. It is. The branding is... Uh, I don't know. I can't really read the letters. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's, it's fine. a B, A, and then there's a K with like three little dots above it, and then two A's. Well, when you run your annual NAFO uh, orgy, you know, I'll just have some then. Yeah, yeah, you can come to the, the fucking uh, NAFO orgy. It's on deck three yeah. of the uh, the Great East. It's, it's on deck three of the Great Eastern Mark II, yeah. Oh. The Great Eastern Mark II Electric Boogaloo. The oh, home, yeah, that's is good. The, yeah. the home of the the home of the NAFO hecking hectagon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've got an entire room that's just a ball pit. <laughs> oh, awesome. And an entire room that's just a ball pit. You got some Neil sir on there? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, I'm well prepared. I've been to an orgy before. It's it's fine. There is there is adjacent showers. You can... Oh, apparently this the apparently while we're recording this right now, the Americans are getting ready for the State of the Union address. Oh hell yep. yeah. That's gonna be good. Um, Dark Brandon is gonna be speaking soon. Dark Brandon is gonna be speaking soon. Yes, Any bets yeah, on how long for it's... Ukraine potentially? Uh, maybe. Let's. Oh, I wish it'll be a twenty-five minute speech. I, I, I'm guaranteeing this right now. Twenty-five minutes. He'll talk very little about Ukraine. Talk very much about the the uh, balloon that was popped. <laughs> um, and talk about the measures that are being put into uh, national defense. Yep. I I am. Um... How many? What? What's our pool on um, stutters or misspeaks? How many? How many we're looking? I don't at? like. I don't really like to rip on Dark Brandon for that because, like, stuttering and like you know missteps are. They're a thing that happen to people, and it's it doesn't like it, it's not a good measure of like intelligence. You know? What oh I mean? no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm more worried about the fact that the guy looks ninety. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, fair enough. But. <laughs> all, I, all I'm going to say is there was like if you put you put Biden and Bernie on the same stage, I guarantee you Bernie will carry that stage any day of the week. So, like, hell, I will give him credit. At the same age, old mate Ronnie Reagan was tearing it up. Oh, God. Ronnie was like as much as I disagree with his political decisions. Ronnie was a f- showman. He was he was a Hollywood actor who became president. So like. 
Of well, course. Yeah, of course he was a showman. <laughs> Even yeah, though he was in point. bed by 4 p.m. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, like, I don't know. I need you to get my jelly beans. <laughs> I gotta get my jelly beans, Mark. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> which Nancy, get out of the way. I need to get my jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which one of these buttons uh, orders me a coke <laughs> the thing is the thing is i think biden being this dottery old senile grandpa is probably one of the most masterful deception plans the democrats have ever made and the republicans are so thirsty for blood they're just happy to buy into it <laughs> the thing is he's not senile he's amazingly intelligent but even if he was this is the guy who beat trump <laughs> this is the guy who is potentially going to beat putin <laughs> don't don't give me all that crap of oh no they stole the vote a thousand dead people voted for Biden no they didn't they just calculated the rural areas first and then the city votes and more people live in the city than out in the country so Trump looked like he was ahead in the polls because dumbass farmers and country boys are easily manipulated by any guy in a suit who shows up and tells them exactly what they want to hear or why is it do you think that every single president in history on the campaign trail sits in the city and talks about foreign policy and, and the economy and everything and then the second the absolute second they hit the country they just start talking about family and Christ and guns <laughs> It, it, it was it was incredible it was huge it was a big project uh, everybody lines up everybody <laughs> loves me they love me i like i went to the big conference i went to the conference you know the one in the, that other country that's not us uh and the best, and ever. The best um, president China's ever is afraid of me uh vladimir putin is a good china. friend of mine china i got china <laughs> China, they love me. China, I, I get the best steaks. They get the Trump steaks. They love me over there. It's, it's it, I get the best things ever. Oh, oh God, my yeah. hands are so huge. My dick is yeah. so huge. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, shut up. I no. will say this about Donald Trump, though. I don't think he's a bad person. He's a very wrong person. <laughs> oh, I'm he's a very to... he's very wrong. Well, but I don't think he... that. And no, 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 just just hear me out. I don't think he had any ill intent when he was making his statements. Like, I don't think he wanted to, like, hurt anybody. Um, yeah. But he was very wrong. Like, he, he was completely Dude. fucking wrong. And he, he, was a he, just, he, just wanted to, he just wanted to slowly funnel all the money towards his friends. Like, nah. he has done <laughs> his entire life. Yeah, yeah. I mean... He's he, just come in he was a good businessman. He's, he's just a guy who's going to come in and say whatever <laughs> the people want him to say. And are, they'll just applaud. They go, yeah, 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 it's great. It's wonderful. You all, you all be rich and famous. It's wonderful because of me. And I'm like, <laughs> and, I'm like <laughs> and then he'll just funnel all that money towards his fucking friends, his friends who now suddenly own property yes. out in the fucking wildlands and fucking other bullshit. Like, like shit we weren't typically allowed to sell, but suddenly all these national parks are now for sale to Trump's friends so they can build deregulated nuclear power plants that's not going to go wrong at any point. <laughs> no, not at all. Like the whole thing about Trump is that he was very honest about what he was doing during his presidency. He was very, <laughs> he was very transparent about it. And anybody who was like blind to that, that's their own fault. You're gonna, you're gonna get a slight tax break, but all my friends are gonna get bigger tax breaks, and that's fine. Like you're gonna be building all these fucking nuclear power plants everywhere. They're deregulated. They're not built up to the to the to the same standard as their current ones. So it's gonna be mm -hmm. a bit cheap and shit. So they might break down, but that's fine. You know, you're gonna get a tax break, so you love me for that. It's fine. I'm Trump. Hello. You look at the Trump brand nuclear reactor, and it's like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the Trump nuclear reactor, and, the, and you look at the name of the chief engineer who designed the reactor diatlov jr and you're like hmm oh god <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh. Where, where do we where do we hire this dude from oh we hired him from belarus i mean things are looking pretty cool right now he came recommended by someone like uh, <laughs> Ruka, L L lukashenko i think his name is i don't know <laughs> Oh, <laughs> fuck me, dude, dude, now there's there's a topic. There's the, <laughs> there's, the a, there's a there's a president when you <laughs> see him there in his skin tight skiing outfit. You're just like, yeah, there's a man. There's a true a alpha real man. Chad. <laughs> there's a true alpha Chad. 
maybe that's maybe that's the thing that uh, Zelensky is so worried about with this because he keeps warning of an upcoming Russian offensive. It's not even a betra- it's not even a stab in the back. Ha <laughs> ha! It's not even a stab in the back from Belarus. It is literally just Lukashenko walking across the border checkpoint in his skin tight outfit. <laughs> he, is, he demands a settlement with Ukraine. <laughs> Actually, let's talk about that briefly. For those of you who don't know, actually to talk about what we're supposed to be talking about. God, yeah. Remember but, when we were talking about Ukraine? Yeah, yeah right. as I said, this was Fuck. this was basic. I kind of knew this was going to happen. This was going to turn into weird autistic military nerd trash taste where <laughs> we're, we're, supposedly, we're supposedly talking about a certain thing, but in reality, it's just three idiots talking. Yeah, um, let's be real. Like, this is a fucking train wreck. No, no, this is a good train wreck, and it's art. Like, I, I can't wait to see... I don't to edit this into a f***ing video. I mean, I'm trainers the... are cool to look at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this, here's the fun part. Uh, the head of Wagner Group wants to settle the matter of the Battle of Bakhmut by having a dogfight in a fighter jet with Zelensky. I would challenge him directly. Who just yes, I role. agree. Let's give him an F twenty two. I don't know if we could teach Zelensky. Like, I don't know what. I mean, he's a good comedian. His series "Servant of the People" was one of the greatest uh, greatest election campaigns I've ever seen in my life. Oh um, come on, come on, Anna Markey. you're the best DCS teacher ever run into. So no, I am not even close. I like if we're talking DCS lopping fanboys. I have fought a Finnish guy named Kapsu and a South Korean guy named Sung Ho. I, oh, yeah. I am not worthy of either of those men. Um, well, all I'm saying is, like, we could, like, what's his name in Wagner has no absolute, like, knowledge of our fighter jets. Whereas Zelensky, he has us. We can teach him like the bare basics and he would have, he would have an up or, over him. Hear me out. Hear me out. We actually get professionals like C.W. Lemoyne to do it, author of the <laughs> Spectre series. You know, that guy. Oh, I do love that man. Oh, He's great. Hear me out. We give him a B 21 and we give him the coordinates of Putin's golden toilet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bombing the shit out of Moscow sounds great. It's the Chad RQ. It's, 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 it's just, like his, my- just his toilet specifically. Like, like no, seriously. I always was wondering about this. What if you could develop a long range? Uh, you, we already have. We, they already exist. But think about it this way. Deploying uh, submunitions, deploying loitering munitions from the B-21, stealthy loitering munitions. You just, you're at 60,000 fleet, completely invisible, and you're just like, I'm going to blow up Putin's shit up. So I'm going to one-up you. I'm going to say... Vladimir Putin, if you're watching this video right now, <laughs> fight me IRL. <laughs> fight me IRL. <laughs> fight me IRL. We get an ten email. Paces, for, ten, we... <laughs> no, 10 paces, pistols. <laughs> I will drop you. Like, I I promise you I'm a better shot because, like, yes, I respect you for your uh, KGB training, but um, I'm also an American and I'm unkillable. So bring it one v one me and rust bitch <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> no i this takes me back to the time two and a half thousand hours and f- rust Fight <laughs> <me>. <laughs> no seriously interventions only <laughs> this takes <laughs> <laughs> this takes me back this takes me all the way back to something like 2017 uh Laser Pig, you are in the uh, Iberian Peninsula region right now at this point in time, if I recall I am, correctly. Yes. In uh, the Iberian what? Peninsula, Spain. Oh, thank you. Hispania, technically. And since because... my occasionally you might hear uh, very loud sirens past my house because I live uh, I live opposite a uh, fire station. And if there's one thing the Spanish love, it is an incredibly loud fire engine. They absolutely <laughs> love it. You're, you're talking like, the, like there's a fire. The Spanish get very excited because out comes the <laughs> fire engine with its like thousand sirens and its subwoofers on the side. And they're having a rave on the top. And there's like a million Spanish guys in like sexy ass fire outfits just going, yeah, we're going to, we're going to take the fire. What the fuck accent am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take the, we're going to take care of the fire, but we're also going to 
I don't know. Somehow become Italian. I don't know. Ciao, 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 ciao. And they're just screaming past you with this huge fucking siren with a million, million f***ing lights blaring off in this f***ing rave going on on the f***ing top. That's Spain dealing with a f***ing fire. And they show up with this gigantic cannon with a fire hose on it. And blow the entire fucking building to shit with this huge pressure washer. And then going, <laughs> hey, the fire's <laughs> out! Hey, we did it! High five! Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Commence aggressive flamenco. <laughs> Because I cannot Cook do a Spanish pizza. accent despite <laughs> leaving you for five years. <laughs> Tement's aggressive flamenco dancing. Um, no, seriously. Yo, Puss and Boost is great, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not really a numbers guy. Oh, um, I love that movie. <laughs> it was so good. The fact that that movie had an unironic Attack on Titan reference made me happy. It was unironically a good movie. It was just, not shit. Yo, just for reference, if anyone's actually... I'm, I want you to keep this bit in, Lazy Pig. If, for reference, this conversation isn't actually a new conversation on this stream. Seriously, before this stream started, we were just chatting shit for an hour and a half, and we suddenly realized, oh, wait, we have to record a podcast, don't we? And it was uh, literally yeah. this caliber of conversation. And this speaking of podcast which... podcast has been shit. Yeah, you no, know what? It's been great. It's been fantastic. <laughs> Speaking of stuff about Spain, that's the one thing the Ukrainians need to get. They need when after this war's over and they're like, we need to distance ourselves from the Russian occupier. What do we need? We need to change our dress uniform. Spanish battle dress. Spanish Ooh. field dress uniform. Ooh. You know why? Simple. Because you have all these Giga Chad Ukrainians marching on Independence Day and their chests are fully visible. Like all the way open. I don't know awesome. if you if you see yes, those yes, I have, I have, I have seen it. Um, <laughs> I had, a, I had a wonderful. Um, so there's where near where I live, there is in fact a Spanish prison, and just occasionally, every now and again, someone escapes from it, and the Spanish police do not take very kindly to that. So they are out with the bajillion helicopters that they have. They are out <laughs> in the riot gear, and these, I mean. Spanish, you have two versions of Spanish police. You have the local Spanish police, and then you have that Garda. And the Garda are famous for, mostly for the first time I went to Spain, there had been a problem. And this is going to be a bit dark for a second, so I do apologize. So the Garda, there was a problem where a Moroccan immigrant who was very dark-skinned had this brilliant idea where he'd buy a car that was very similar to the kind of police car that the guard would use. And he would paint it to look like a proper police car and pull people over and fine them. And he would get them to pay like illegitimate fines and what have you. And at one point he um he um he did something with a woman that I will not get into on YouTube. But um it was very awesome. it, was, it was very it was very it was very horrific. It was very bad. And the Spanish people were like, well, what are you going to do about this? How are you going to stop this kind of per these, kind of these kind of people? And the guard were like, well, we don't hire black people. So, you know, if the black person pulls you over, it's not legit. Shoot him in the fucking Oof. face. We don't care. Um, no. <laughs> just, just kind of showing, like, and it just, just to put emphasis on just how wrong a statement that was, they decided to start a poster campaign of these gigantic posters absolutely everywhere over the south of Spain with um, a person behind the wheel this 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 black person this Af this this african looking person behind the wheel with the lights kind of dim so that just like there's a thin layer of light across his eyes behind the wheel and it said beware black person and but it was in spanish and what is the spanish for the word black i'm not saying that <laughs> i'll say it i'll say it negro it is negeg it is negro yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you I, said, I, I said it in the proper way. <laughs> Negato. It is Negato. So what <laughs> you can imagine what this poster, <laughs> me looking at this poster, just like about like a ten minute walk from my house as I was walking walking to visit my mother one day, and there it is staring at me. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that's Spain. Oh, no. So that's the Garda. What was I saying before this? I can't remember. All I need to know is like, or all I need to say right now is that 
uh, me and the boys are like really lit right now, and we are still wanting to chat and chill. Um, so we got to end the proper video. We just need to say, ladies and gentlemen, the Ukraine war has been going on for a year. Um, it's been horrible. A lot of good people have been hurt. Don't trust Russia. And um, yeah, we're going to call it here, I think. Can I just have one quick last rant? I mean, oh, it's yeah. your video, so. <laughs> <laughs> I want this on record. Because I was saving this for another video that I'm working on. But in case that video comes out too late, or nor I mean it never fucking comes out because I'm terrible at making videos. I want this on record that I've said this. Putin is currently weighing his options. He is trying to decide which is going to be less damaging to his political career, which is letting this war drag on for another year or two, or taking the f L. If Putin takes the L, he can have a chance to look like the bigger man. He can say, you know, well, this has gone on too long, it's costing us way too much, it's not worth it, and then he gets to look like the hero who brought everyone home. And you need to remember, he is sitting at the head of one of the most dedicated and one of the most powerful propaganda departments in the world, so you better believe that he will spin that to make him to make himself look like the hero. Blame will be placed on the war organizers, the incompetent generals, and of course the imperialism of America and NATO. But for that, hell yeah, for hell yeah. But for that narrative to be complete, it needs a watered down. It needs to be watered down for the Russian public. They can always question why these men were allowed to be in such positions. Uh, how an alliance of nations they've always been told they could wipe out by the the hordes of VVD paratroopers and tanks that could that were like big muscular bound guys versus the oh sure his f her whatever fucking American shit army, whatever. How that alliance could threaten Russian expansion plans the way they did. The Russian people need an eternal enemy, and Putin is going to defeat them one. And can you guess who it is? It's up for debate. It really is. Like he's got a number of enemies he could choose. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm guessing. <clears throat> my guess, uh, if I was a betting man, and I am, it's a serious problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been there. I would probably suggest he is going to go with some variant. If he's forced to take the L, he's going to go with some variant of the stabbed in the back myth. Almost certainly. Yep. Yes. He oh, is. his own men. His own men are going to be the problem. Yeah. It wasn't who, me. Who, who, who is his own man? I'm not talking about his internal security force because he needs them. Oh he no, needs... Shoigu's for, for one. No, not not Shoigu. I would say not Shoigu because that man has that man has survived. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't do live content. I, I, Shoigu has Shoigu has survived uh, purges before. Mm. He's very good at that. He's a very good political move, maneuver, uh, mover. We need someone who has no political power who can be turned on in an instant. The commander of the uh, Ukraine operation. Close. It would be. It would be, it'd be funny. Like, I would say Navalny, but he's already in prison. So, like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Russia needs uh, an internal enemy. Putin is going to give them one, and that enemy is going to be the Wagner Group. Ooh. Wagner. Ooh. I mean, Wagner has neo Nazi origins, and you'd be mad to think that Putin wasn't keeping that for a rainy day. They have this big, shiny building in Moscow that's like their headquarters and yeah, is decorated right. with elaborate furnishings and offices, many of which were a gift from the Russian government. Hmm. So, you know. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, you can see that. So, you know, if you look if you look at Russian social media, if you look at the telegrams and everything, you see this huge wedge being sort of driven between the standard Russian army and the Wagner group. Like the, 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 the Russian, the like Shogun and everything are trying to picture the Wagner group as people who are glory boys, people who show up at the end of the battle and take all the glory and everything. They take lots of photos of themselves heroically charging into battle, wait till the real Russian army deals with the threats, and then heroically charge in afterwards to claim victory. You know, and which is completely normal in terms of Russian politics, but you know, it can be used to create that narrative of, of greed and incompetence. No one will question Putin why these people were given such positions of trust. They will see these images of the real Russian army covered in mud and exhausted with outdated equipment and then leaked image. This is leaked in quotation marks, by the way. Images of the Wagner group with these impressive looking guns and modern equipment covering themselves in fake blood and filming stuff for TikTok. And any the thing is, anytime 
someone asks an, um, a Russian soldier, is this true? Almost every single one of them will say, yeah, yeah, it is. We did all the fight and Jesus. Wagner took all the glory. If Putin takes the L and Russian withdraws, then Wagner will be thrown under the bus. You know, I, I, I'm going to put it on record now that I've said this, but expect the FSB to write that building and images of the sort of opulence, the grandeur of the, the Wagner leadership lived in to be broadcast to a nation out for blood on who to f***ing blame. Oh, it's an easy, it's easy. I, think, I think that's the direction he's going to go. Yeah. I think right wins. now he's confident because there's there's... I, I genuinely think there is going to be some sort of massive summer offensive and Putin is kind of banking on it. And if that fails, I don't think this is going to drag out another year. I think Putin will take the L, Wagner will be thrown under the bus, and you will see Russia double down and become kind of like a super North Korea. I can and, see that. And be honest, I'll be honest with you, if they build a wall, I wouldn't be half f***ing surprised. Like a literal physical wall? A physical f***ing wall, yeah. Well, the thing is, it takes two yeah. people. It takes two people to throw a war. And uh, what's the old saying? There was a, there was an old joke like we threw a war, and the other side didn't show up. Right? Seriously, <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you, right Anna now, yeah. Let's be real though. It only takes one to declare war, though. Uh, I mean, you know, like I'm just saying, like I said earlier, Sevastopol by September. Um, <laughs> let's what go, a boys. Joke. Let's go. Let's We're fucking go. go, boys. We're I going. Mean, yeah, if, Putin, if Putin takes the L, he will try and hold on to the territory that he has currently taken and said, you know what? You know what? You just have you what you have. You know, we just, we just keep what we have. And then he'll try and use that as a bargaining chip. But it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's up to us to pressure these politicians to say, no, um, Russia needs to give these territories back. They can't keep these they, they, they can't keep what they've claimed as fucking holiday destinations for russia's they need to give these back to ukraine they need to give these back to the people who live there so they can move back to their homes and rebuild their fucking lives yeah i think can i make a quasi closing statement uh, unless you have more to say like i oh i, I i'm out i got nothing <laughs> okay okay you know what to end us off here is falcon's fighter tales yeah <laughs> So this is probably going to be edited out. We'll find another way. But all I know is that there's good boys in Ukraine. There's good boys in Russia, probably. And I just hate seeing good boys killing each other. Oh, I know where the good boys are in Russia. They're not killing any. They're not killing anyone in Ukraine, though. They are Molotov cocktailing recruitment centers and sabotaging railway lines. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking old guy that just that just hobbled along the street and just threw a mold of cocktail a recruitment center. <laughs> he did. Yeah. 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 But there is but there is there is an underground movement starting like it's been there against Putin's regime for a long time, but like ever since the uh special military operation for the securing of the safety of Donbass, uh quotation marks. Uh, there has been a lot of special uh, citizen operations going on. <laughs> Dude, turns <laughs> out being drafted to a getting drafted to a war where you're going to go kill your auntie is not fun. You know what I mean? Like it. Yeah, in a war you know you're gonna lose. Either. <laughs> like either way, like shit. No, like it's, it's one of the saddest parts about this whole war is that if you come from Western Russia. It is almost oh, yeah. guaranteed that you have family in Ukraine of some kind. Absolutely. And you're being asked, like, you're getting, you're drafted, like, you're, you're drafted, fantastic. You're going to go fight. Okay, who am I fighting? Ukraine. All right, why are we fighting Ukraine? Because Nazis. Because we were told to. <laughs> um, and then it's like, they said so. okay, so, uh, who, like, you know, it's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a lot of justifying, you know, you've, the thing is, I remember them interviewing people before the war started when the when the Russian troop buildup was there, and they asked a bunch of pro Putin, like Putin's Russia supporters. They were like, "Oh, do you think we're going to go to war with Ukraine?" And the younger generation was like, "I don't like to talk about politics," and just walked off. Well, yeah, because he would get arrested if like yeah that footage ever got out. Yeah, exactly. But the older generation, who are very pro Putin, yeah, let's go oh, Putin. God. They said, no, we would never attack Ukraine. <laughs> they're our brothers. They're our friends. Yeah. And so, on the one hand, you've got to ask yourself, yeah, well, that was a fucking lie, for starters, on a political sense. 
But on the flip side, you're now having to draft a bunch of people who don't want to be there because draftees don't want to be there. And then you're going to force them to fight their, like, what most likely they have a second cousin in Kiev, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to ask you to kill, like, I don't see how Putin can keep this up. Like, politically, politically, you're right, Laser Pig, because he has to bug out and take the L. Because if he pushes this all the way, like, Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go one better. Say I'm um, Yuri Lotsamanovich, all right, and I'm sitting <laughs> and I'm sitting <laughs> and I'm sitting and I'm sitting in freaking Peskov in my mansion, and I suddenly hear that all my overseas investments have been seized. Um, my daughter's application to Yale got cancelled. My useless shitbag son, my useless shitbag son, Pavel, is now no longer accepted into university and has to join the army. And he won't even become an officer because he's useless and he's just waiting for me to die to inherit my money, right? <laughs> I'm sitting here with all of my life crashing down around me. My assets are seized. I can't travel. My useless kids are bullshitting me. Are you telling me, like, man, if I was losing the money that these oligarchs are losing every day, I would have pushed Putin out of a window weeks ago, months ago, yeah, years ago. Enough. There's a reason that man is wearing a bulletproof vest everywhere he goes. Right? I'm yeah. telling you, coward. this this dude, no, he's not a coward. He's smart because he knows the moment, like, he is watching his back. There is a reason why lots of oligarchs have started randomly disappearing. You want to know what I, I, I'm place money on it i would lay i would lay not london but rome to a brick because what he's doing is prescribing them i reckon i would i would actually lay rome to a brick that putin is prescribing his oligarchs it's like oh no oh no uh Volodya had a tragic accident what's that his will left everything to me oh happy days <laughs> so i'll say this though <laughs> I'm the kind of person who would never ask somebody to do what I wouldn't do myself. Putin seems like the opposite of that. He seems like somebody who is more than willing to have people do work for him. And just that never sat right with me. He's not a man. Oh, uh, I don't you know. You need to understand he is a man who wears high heels to make him look taller and wears a jacket that is padded to make his shoulders look wider. I was going to say, I don't have any problem with like, you know, Guys wearing high heels, if that's you know, I, mean, I don't, I don't have any problems like, with guys wearing high heels as long as it's obvious they're wearing high heels because they're doing it for a specific purpose. They're yeah, wearing high heels, but he is doing it. He is doing it discreetly to make him look taller and whiter and bigger. He's a coward. Yes. In Vladimir Putin, if you're listening to this, like I said before, one v one me. <laughs> and Putin, if you are listening to this, you're some my boosters or Yeah, what he said. Yes. What kind of I? I don't understand. That's like, uh, that's you know what? That's the, that's what we should end on. NAFO sides with the Japanese nationalists to reclaim the Kuril Islands in solidarity with Ukraine. <laughs> yes, and the words awesome. of a Polish chef that I worked with uh, a long time ago when I asked him about uh, Putin, Jezwinski. Kurva manual. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, I don't but... know what it means, but but Polish people say kurva quite a lot, and it, it something. Not yeah. Zivinsky <laughs> kurva. I will say, if there are any uh, Ukrainian people listening to this, though, you guys are doing good. You have support. We support you. We love you. You're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> never hell yeah solidarity forever wait a you're minute you're three weeaboos backing you we have you have three guys sitting in a in a in a fucking bunker miles underground who is giving you the thumbs up saying hey we support you well done good for you <laughs> <laughs> yes am i well, ending then, it here <laughs> uh, y- i guess yeah. <laughs> i guess well. we got we might as well end it here we did all this charity work and all we got was this <laughs> shitty dog profile picture <laughs> <laughs> by <laughs> hey, you know, it. by <laughs> <Nathan> <laughs> nerd. <laughs>